Welcome back to all of the students of our Lord and Savior and our soon coming King, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Christ. Um, tonight is going to be absolutely mind blowing. And I need you to have three items, okay? And three items only. Have the greatest weapon in history, the gospel that Christ taught, okay? Um, this is going to be absolutely powerful. So have the greatest weapon that Christ taught, uh, the gospel of Christ. Now, if you don't have the physical uh, King James interpretation, uh, at least have the electronic version. And I thank you guys for your patience on um, today. And you have my word, we will not be this late again. Okay, today um, I had uh, a very important meeting, but I am excited um, to be back with you guys tonight. This is my favorite time of the week. Not me going on some red carpet here in Hollywood. No, that's last. Uh, not even as a special guest on a radio talk show or podcast somewhere from around the world. This is my favorite time of the week on Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay? So um, I am so excited to be with you guys here uh, today. And uh, again, three things I'll need you to have. Have the greatest weapon in history, uh, the gospel of Christ. That's number one. Number two, uh, if you don't have the physical King James Version, at least have the electronic version. And if the moderators can put up uh, the uh, link for those who don't have the physical uh, King James Bible, uh, at least have the electronic version, all right? Uh, that's number one. Number two, have two to three pins. And number three, make sure you have uh, a very large notebook. Was class the other night, the global master class, was it mind-blowing to you? I said, was it mind blowing to you? I got to tell you, it was absolutely mind blowing to me. And I am so excited. Now, I felt the leading of the Lord to go into a new module, a new volume tonight um, that is going to uh, absolutely uh transform your thinking okay now when i'm about ready to teach tonight there is not one ounce or one trace of any anti-semitism within the bishop okay so don't 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 get it twisted okay uh, my right hand person in the office in new york Sister Lisa, she is a Hasidic Jew. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm not talking about the Jewish diaspora. What I'm going to expose tonight is one family that has caused mayhem, shipwreck, and utter destruction, and that is the Rothschild family the Rothschild dynasty. And we're going to uh, lay foundation tonight concerning the generations of Cain ruling the world. Oh my, the generations of Cain ruling the world. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth for thy word is truth in Yeshua's holy name. I invite your attention. It's great to see all of you. Pastor Sam, Pastor Jody Bird, uh, Apostle Sam, Apostle Bird. Um, I'm telling you, Pastor Ewing, Pastor Sue, Pastor Chris Black. Oh, Lord have mercy. This 
is going to be absolutely mind blowing. Uh, Pastor Colleen, great to see you, my daughter. Thank you so much for putting up uh, those links from the last class. Pastor uh, Michael, great to see you. Great man of God. Apostle Ty Kemp, a uh, great friend of mine and brother in Christ, um, who I consider my spiritual son in Christ, uh, a true apostle of Christ, uh, Apostle Ty Kemp, and his powerful and anointed wife, uh, Apostle Carlotta Kemp, who I consider not just a special friend, my sister in Christ, but a spiritual daughter in Christ. Great to see all of you, Pastor Robert, uh, Apostle True Witness Ministries, um, Pastor Benjamin Clark, a man's man. Great to see you, great man of God. Love you, sir, in Christ's holy name. Pastor Robert Douglas, great to see you. Uh, great man of God, Pastor Joseph McClendon, great to see you, man of God. Pastor Craig Moore, Simo, it's great to see you, man of God. Uh, praise God. Um, you have my word. I will be calling you this weekend, uh, Pastor Craig and Pastor Dave, we're going to have uh, our dinner or an early lunch this Sunday, okay? Great to see all of you in Christ's holy name. All right. I wish to invite your attention tonight to the book of the beginnings called the Genesis, the genetics of God. Great to see you, Pastor Rick Remington, my son in Christ. Great brother, great patriot. Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, dropping down to verses 7 and 9, and dropping down to verse 12. Pastor Sam, there is an anointing already. The book of the genetics of God, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, Dropping down to verses 7 and 9 in verse 12. And the key verse that I want every one of you to fully concentrate on is the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. That is the key verse tonight. Revelation 3 and 9, from whence we shall receive the subject tonight. The book of the genetics of God. I absolutely love teaching. Genesis chapter number 4, verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare or Mendenhall came and said, I have gotten a man not in the Lord, from the Lord, or separated from the Lord. I'll explain that. Great to see you, Pastor Emmanuel and Pastor Sippy. My daughter's in Christ. And she, again, Genesis 4 and 2, bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep apostolically, but Cain was a tiller, a cultivator of a ground that was cursed. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect or favor unto Abel and to his apostolic offering, but unto Cain and to his Illuminati offering, he had not respect or favor. 
and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell or the countenance of Cain became shape-shifted. The countenance of Cain became shape-shifted. Oh, Pastor Sippy, Pastor Sam, there's an anointing here tonight. Dropping down to verse number seven of Genesis four and seven. Hear ye the word of the Lord. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. God is, is speaking to Cain. And if thou doest not well, sin or a paschal lamb is positioned at the door. Christ the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. And Cain, thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up. This is where you get the term raising Cain. Raising Cain. And Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Though we're in the Hebrew Old Testament, but the Persian interpretation for slew and him, Pastor Ewing, is violation. And slew Abel or Cain, violated or but broke his own brother. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And Cain said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper or am I my brother's nature? Where is Abel thy nature? Am I my brother's nature? You have to understand, students, though Cain and Abel were fraternal twins, but the spiritual etymology of Cain and Abel actually represents one body. Cain, one's fallen nature, Abel, the spirit. Cain, Abel, cannibal, cannibalism, spirit, cooking. Now drop down to verse number 12. When thou tillest or cultivatest the ground that was already cursed, it shall none henceforth yield unto thee her strength. Here we go, a fugitive. And a vagabond. Circle those two words, fugitive and vagabond. Fugitive, the term fugitive means one who is a fabricated house. Oh, the anointing is moving here tonight, Pastor Sam. The term fugitive means a fabricated house built in Turkey moved to Palestine built in Mongolia moved to Palestine built in central China among the Han in the Ming dynasties but moved to Palestine. And the term vagabond means without a home, a wandering star, as Jude said, a fugitive or a fabricated identity and a vagabond without a home shalt thou be not on the earth, in the earth. 
Oh, my Lord, there's a heavy anointing, Apostle Ty Kim. Now, go to the key verse tonight, to the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Now, if you feel the leading of the Lord to stay up late, do that, okay? Revelation 3 and 9. This is the key verse that I want every one of you to concentrate on tonight. From whence we shall receive the subject tonight. Revelation 3 and 9, Christ is speaking to the Apostle St. John on the Al of Patmos off of the coast of Greece and Cyprian or Cyprus. Behold, I will make them. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying this. Christ is saying this. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. The term synagogue is a composition of two Cyprian meanings. Sena, S-Y-N-A, means mine. Gog, G-O-G-U-E, means consciousness. So when you say the synagogue of Satan, Christ was actually exposing the mind in the consciousness of Satan. Mm. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Christ is referring to one family, the Rothschilds, which say they are Jews, but are not, but do lie. We're not talking about the Jewish people. 99.9% .9 of the Jewish people are absolutely beautiful people. Christ is speaking to a bloodline that has existed for 2,000 years that began as the Bacharachs during the time of Christ, which changed their name to Bauer in 1501, which then 76 years later, they changed their name to Rothschild. But do lie, behold, I will make them, I will make the Rothschild dynasty to come and worship before thy feet, the apostolic church, and to know that I have loved thee. Woo, sinner, mind, gog, consciousness. Now go back to the book of the beginnings called the genetics of God. Genesis chapter four, verse one, number one. Genesis chapter four, verse one. Let's lay apostolic foundation, ladies and gentlemen, of a brand new series entitled the generations of Cain ruling the world. Oh my. The generations of Cain ruling the world. According to the Shakespearean wisdom of the 1599 to 1601, document play called Hamlet. William Shakespeare, whose real name is Sir Francis Bacon had said, concerning the paradigm of Hamlet, which is widely recognized as one of the most powerful plays in the history of English theater. 
Hamlet talks about revenge and tragedy through misidentification revolving around the paradigm of a Danish prince who in reality, Mississippi, was of the genetical bloodline called the Khazars. Hamlet, in Act 3, Scene 1, to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind of man to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, moderation, or to take up arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them. Allow me to repeat what Shakespeare is saying within Hamlet. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind of man to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune moderation or to take up arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them. One of my favorite Shakespearean plays, the 1596, The Merchant of Venice, truth shall come to light. Murder cannot be hid long. A man's son may, but at the length, truth will out. The Kazarian kingdom represents a people not of true Hebrew and Jewish descent. In volume two, number three of the document published in September of 1978, pages 261 to 281, the Khazar Kingdom's conversion to Judaism. The Khazar Kingdom's conversion to Judaism written by a Polish Jewish scholar by the name of Dr. Emma John Prickscat. Capital O M E L J A N, Pritzak, P R I T S A K, as a part of the Harvard Ukrainian studies at the world renowned Harvard University's Ukrainian Research Institute. Dr. Pritzak had said, that 95% of the Jewish diaspora coming out of Turkey, Mongolia, and China do not have any connection to Palestine or to Israel. Written by a Jewish scholar Dr. Omeljan Prickskak or Pritsak, Harvard University's Ukrainian Research Institute. It is interesting that Dr. Pritsak also said that Leo the Khazar, 
between Malachi and Matthew, Matthew and Malachi had plundered Jerusalem in the Polish term Pritzak is actually a forerunner of the name Pritzker. That the Kazarian devil by the name of Leo the Khazar, I'm not talking about Jewish people, I'm talking about the descendants of Cain who are the Rothschilds today. That the Kazarian mafia called the Rothschilds came up not out of Germany or Eastern Europe, but came out of Turkey, parts of Mongolia connected to the bloodline of Genghis Khan and the rest of the Rothschild bloodline coming out of central China among the Han in the Ming dynasties. Volume two, number three of the Khazar Kingdom's conversion to Judaism, Dr. Pritzak says that the present day, and this is in 78, the present day in 1978, Jewish diaspora are not true Jews. You see, Dr. Kemp, I'm using Jewish scholars so they won't come back and blame me and calling me an anti-Semite. Let's continue the lay foundation concerning the generations of Cain ruling this world, this terra firma. The present day Jewish diaspora living in Eastern, Central, and Western Europe and practically all over the world, their bloodline goes back to present-day Turkey and Mongolia, Genghis Khan, and amongst the Han in the Ming dynasties in central China. The bloodline of Leo the Khazar, who between Malachi and Matthew, plundered Jerusalem, took the Ark of the Covenant, took the Torah of God's thought, and replaced it with a counterfeit Torah called the Talmud. The Palestinian Talmud in the Jerusalem Talmud are two documents that are not of God. Neither did God co-sign the creation of the Palestinian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud because it promotes pedophilia. It says that it promotes a three-year-old girl to marry a grown man, a three-year-old boy to marry a grown woman. That is in the Talmud. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Don't call me an anti-Semite, America. I'm going to your documents by your writers in order to expose these demons called the Rothschild. In the Palestinian Talmud, in the Jerusalem Talmud, it greatly disrespects our soon coming Messiah and King the Lord Jesus Christ or Yeshua the Christ. It says both in the Palestinian Talmud, in the Jerusalem Talmud, 
that they're going to boil, Lord, forgive me for saying this, the body of Christ within a cauldron of semen. Don't take it down, YouTube. I'm not talking about the C word or the V word. The descendants of Cain that we call the generations of Cain are ruling the world. Stay there in Genesis 4 and 1. Let's slowly continue to lay apostolic foundation. Another document called the World of the Khazars. Edited by Dr. Peter B. Golden, a great Jewish writer. Dr. Haggai bin Shemaiah and Andrus Ronatos, a Middle Eastern Jewish scholar, published by the Brill Publishing Corporation, HDO, the world of the Khazars, in connection to the history of Edom and Khazaria, the other Israel, by Jewish scholars from the University of Tel Aviv that the original Hebrews were black and the original Jews were black. You got to remember this, students. Every Hebrew is a Jew, but not every Jew is a Hebrew. The term Hebrew means he rules. When God gave Adam dominion, God gave Adam the Hebraic dominion over the universe, not just uh, the earth, but the heavens. So the term dominion means kingdom, ruling the domain of the king who is the Christ from a Hebrew psychology, meaning he rules. That's the paradigm of Hebrew. Thank you, Jew witness. The interpretation of the term Jew means one who is disciplined as a Hebrew. Always remember, students of Christ, Hebrew is a mindset. Jewish is Christ consciousness. Like Seneca, Sena mind God consciousness. The Gospels declare that Christ taught in their synagogues or the Christ taught within the mind in the consciousness of the people. So then the generations of Cain ruling the world. Let's continue to lay foundation. Hebrew is not a bloodline. It's a mindset to rule God's creation. The term Jewish is not a bloodline. It is an apostolic discipline, meaning to discipline yourself to become rulers of God's creation. The bloodline that started through Abram, Abram, a ram caught in the thicket or the bush. So God spoke out of the heavens and spoke to Abram who had Chaldean blood. So the original Jews who were black, they possess a Chaldeic bloodline. There's no such thing as a Hebraic bloodline or a Jewish bloodline. It's actually a Chaldean bloodline 
in the book of the Genesis. So then the term Chaldean means origination in Persian. Abram, before God called him, was a worshiper of the elements of the earth. And the main element that Abram had worship was the moon god Allah. Christ has nothing to do with Allah. Allah is one of the 365 gods representing each god of each day of the year on the Gregorian calendar that was actually designed by the Vatican through their servant, Muhammad. Muhammad, his handlers, was first his wife, Khadija, and Khadija was actually a Catholic nun. Let me say this. She was a Catholic nun. But see, Muslims don't want to hear this. So God did not create Islam or Lam. Islam or Lam was and is a creature of the global Vatican system. The Vatican created Islam in order to create an extension of Rome in the Middle East so that through Islam, the history of the popes can have access to Jerusalem. So Islam is not of God. You are taught that Muhammad had received the Quran or the Quran or Kahan amongst the caves in Medina. But in actuality, it was the papacy system that had created the Quran gave it to their subordinate, Muhammad, who then took it to Medina and placed it in caves and then told a lie that God gave him the revelation in those caves in Medina. You and I had been lied to, and you and I have been played. The generations of Cain ruling the world. So then, the Kazarian Mafia is a fabricated family called the Rothschilds. Again, according to the document, the Khazar Kingdom's conversion to Judaism, the Kazarian Mafia is a fabricated house built in Turkey, moved to Palestine, built in Mongolia, moved to Palestine, built amongst the Han in the Ming dynasties in China, moved to Palestine. Genghis Khan, a Kazarian devil. Attila the Hun, a Kazarian We've been lied to, Pastor Sippy. The Byzantium Empire is the continuation of the Western Roman Empire. And the Byzantine Empire was ruled by the bloodline of those descendants of one Leo the Khazar. Leo the Khazar, between Malachi and Matthew, plundered Jerusalem. 
took the Ark of the Covenant and sent it to Rome, took the Torah and sent the Torah to Rome and replaced the Holy Torah, which means the law of God to God. Torah means to God. Gospel means in God. If you're going to be in Christ, you have to first come to Christ through the foundation of the Torah. The Torah is the gospel unrevealed and the gospel is the Torah revealed. And so in John chapter one, that the word of the Torah became flesh and dwelt among us. It did not say that the Talmud became flesh. The body of Christ was the Torah made flesh that became the spirit called the Gospels, the good news of the anointing of the Torah. That's the body of Christ, the Torah, made spirit, the gospel. Anything that God has in truth, Satan has a counterfeit. So the Talmud is actually of the anatomy of Satan. The Talmud, when Satan came on this earth, through the serpent. The serpent is the body organ of Lucifer. Lucifer, L. Satan, S. Devil, D. There's your LSD. When Lucifer became flesh, he became the Talmud. I'm not talking about the Jewish people. The bishop is not anti Semitic. How in the world can I be an anti-Semitical teacher if I am the Shemite? So Genghis Khan, Attila the Hun, going through the lineage of Vlad the Impaler. You remember that, this particular uh, devil, Vlad the Impaler which is better known as Count Dracula. The term Count or Countess, it is rooted not in the British crown through the House of Windsor, but the term Count, you remember that, Pastor Sam, uh, Operation London Bridge, the term Count uh, was a counting system of witches and warlocks that they counted the bodies that they blood sucked. That's, that's the paradigm of the term count, countess. In the term uh, Dracula becomes the Greek system called the draconian law. Draconian laws during the time of Aristotle Plato and Socrates had instituted pedophilia, had instituted homosexuality, had instituted lesbianism, had instituted child sacrifice, draconian laws. And the Greek term draconian gave birth to the term vassal state. What is a vassal state? A vassal state, like America, has over 300 million constituents, not you and I, uh, or 300 million house pets. What are you talking about house pets, Bishop? According to the Roman lawgiver, Publius Ovid, he said that the term uh, constituent means a house pet. 
All of this is from the bloodline of Leo the Khazar between uh, Malachi and Matthew, Matthew and Malachi. As a side note, we're breaking down the foundation of the generations of Cain ruling uh, the world. Can I get a drink of water here? Can I take my time tonight? Stay there in Genesis 4 and 1. The term draconian law becomes a vassal state of constituent house pets who then have to pay rent and mortgage, which means mortuary, and rent means to split in two. Oh, Lord Hammer. Thank you, Pastor Sam, Pastor Rick, Pastor Ellis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Sue. So when you say I paid my rent, you done curse yourself. Now, I can say it because I've already prayed over us. When you said in the past, Bishop, I have to pay my rent. You just cursed yourself in the past by saying I'm going to rip myself apart. People destroy for the lack of knowledge. Or I have a 30-year mortgage, mortgage, or mortuary. In other words, you have a 30-year mortgage of the death system that you're paying through a feudalistic system having a landlord or a bank. That system, Pastor Sippy, is one of enslavement, mortgage, mortuary, rent, splitting into. During the time of the Age of Enlightenment in Eastern, Central, and Western Europe, going back to the 1400s, if a individual did not pay rent, uh, their bodies were split in two. This is where you get the term rent. So you had draconian laws, Vlad the Impaler, Dracula, draconian laws, that then designs a vassal state's of 53 states in America, which through each vassal state, they had citizens or constituent house pets who are the peasants on the field, regardless of race, creed, color, or ethnicity. And those peasants on the plantation pay taxes, land taxes, mortgage, rent, land taxes. And those taxes go to Washington through county taxes, local, county, state, federal. Then DC sends that money to London. London sends that money to the Vatican Bank. Do you understand, understand the scam concerning the generations of Cain ruling the world? So then the term Khazar then comes from the Hebrew term Kurzan. K-U-Z-A-N, this is where you get the term Kakistan. And the Turkish interpretation for Khazar is the term Hazar. H-A-Z-A-R meaning nomadic vagabond without a house. Now there is a political system Oh, all the way from Belgium is in the house. God bless you, Pastor Ivan. So the political paradigm 
of the Kazarian kingdom. They're called Kaganites, okay? Interesting, Elena Kagan, Supreme Court Justice, another topic for another day. The term Kaganite, it means a ruler by historical policy or polity. A Kaganite is the Kazarian uh, manifestation of the Islamic caliphate. Uh, let me just say that again. The term Kaganite, ladies and gentlemen, is the Kazarian uh, perspective in the Kazarian manifestation of the Islamic caliphate, a demonic political system. So Kaganites were rulers, politicians, and as a side note, the Greek interpretation for politics is polity. And polity means to be polite. So the Kaganites, uh, part of the bloodline, then immigrates to India and becomes the Khan dynasty. Kappa K-H-A-N, which would produce the bloodline of the Sassoon. The Sassoon's, you don't look good. If we don't look good, you won't look good. Listen, so the Sassoon's were the first drug traders on this earth. They are considered the Rothschilds of the Middle East. The Sassoon's uh, ruled, created and ruled all of the Middle Eastern drug markets which is called Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kakistan. Throughout the Middle East, okay, where they are distributing poppy to this day. Now, as a side note, the Britannica Encyclopedia when you look at the Britannica Encyclopedia's logo, that is a poppy that's grown in the Middle East, which then produces heroin and cocaine. Cain and Abel, co, codependent upon Cain. Okay? Or the term that dentistry uses, Nova Cain, Nova, the goddess of seduction in Greek and Roman mythologies, Nova, like Nova Scotia, Nova in Cain, okay, to subdue pain. So you go from Co Cain to Nova. Cain, Cain and Abel, or Cody, there you go, uh, Pastor Ivan. Cody is the offspring of cocaine and becomes the composition of Nova Cain, which then becomes mercury in your teeth. Another topic for another day. Stay there in Genesis 4 and 1. Is your minds blown tonight? I said, is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are blown. So the generations of Cain ruling the world. Can I take my time, uh, Pastor Colleen? Stay there in uh, Genesis 4 and 1. I'm still uh, laying foundation here. Concerning the generations of Cain, ladies and gentlemen, ruling this terra firma called the world. So the Kaganites become the Khans. 
and which rule the global drug trade. Black folk don't rule it. The Bloods in Crips are just the feudalistic peasants at the bottom of this pyramid. So at the top of the pyramid, the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, then below the eye of Lucifer, you get the 13 families. The first nine families, Pastor Mark, are protected by the remaining four families. Inside of this global uh, paradigm is the nine families. The remaining four protect the four corners of the global Luciferian, Balfamet, Heptagon, Octagon, Deep State. You see, students, if you're going to dissect darkness, it's got to be done through teaching. Can I teach? It cannot be done through preaching. Listen, let me break this down. As a side note, teaching is preaching from the inside out. Preaching is teaching from the outside in. You have to receive instruction from the inside out teaching in order to preach construction from the outside in. So global master classes, I'm not preaching, I'm actually instructing. So you cannot construct a building, engineers, unless you know the schematical blueprint of what you're building from the inside out. This is what we call instruction, teaching from the inside out. Then construction, preaching from the outside in. You see, intuition is discernment from the inside out. And perception is discernment from the outside in. I'm not talking about premonition. That's fear. For God has not given you the spirit of premonition or fear. Power, love, and of a sound mind. So as you stay in Genesis 4 and 1, we are continuing to lay the foundation of the generations of Cain uh, ruling the world. So the kingdoms of the drug trade through the Sassoon bloodline, which then would produce a corporation today uh, called the Jardine Matheson Corporation out of Hong Kong. Now, there were two men uh, named one Jardine and the other one James Matheson who were British killers and pirates who during the two opium wars in the 1800s had flooded Indochina with actually crack cocaine. Let me say this. Crack was not created by the CIA. Crack was not even created by your bloods in Crips. The German interpretation for blood is Cain. The German interpretation uh, for Crip is Abel. So Cain, Abel, cannibal, cannibalism, spirit cooking. It was Cain, the blood, who rose up against his brother, Abel, the Crip, and slew him. Crack started with the serpent. Anything that's evil starts with the serpent. And through thousands of years later, through James Matheson, okay, and William Jardine, thank you, Holy Spirit, they develop crack 
in the composition of opium. Oh, Lord. It's wait. Thank you, Pastor Sam. You see, Pastor Sam hit a nerve with me. When you take the word Lucifer, the term, and write it from right to left rabbinically, it becomes a Latin Vulgate expression, refical, which means the recycling of fecal matter. Crack was created through the Jardine Matheson Corporation via the opium trade. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Why did they almost destroy China? They wanted the oil supply of the Chinese government. They wanted the gold supply of the Chinese government. They wanted the silver, the copper, the mineral water rights, which did not belong to the Western powers, but belong to the Chinese people. Nothing has changed. Let's flood China with crack cocaine in the composition of opium, and let's take something that's not ours. The generations of Cain ruling the world. If you look on Google Images, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, type in uh, the Jardine Matheson Corporation or Jardine Matheson Company's logo, the logo is a poppy seed. It's a poppy, okay? Uh, the golden crescent and the golden triangle, both of the Middle East and Southeast Asia. So that is because all of this happened because of Rothschild money through the Sassoons. Uh, the Sassoons also flooded what you will call the Tibetan kingdoms today. Then you, thank you, Pastor Donald uh, Flock. You see, this is the reason why they hate President Trump. You know why they hate President Trump? They hate President Trump because when Trump was in office, he was sending jets, M-16 jets and drones and destroying the cocaine labs throughout Afghanistan, Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Kakistan. That's why they hate Trump but no weapon that's formed. You see, Trump, oh, Lord have mercy. President Trump has all the goods on them. Thank you, Pastor Benjamin. Okay, so the Tibetan kingdoms, the Han and the Ming dynasties, what the Kazarian mafia did, they disseminated their seed among nations that became Persian of those of the Turkish Federations and Genghis Khan, okay? I, throughout Iran and Iraq. Those through the Caspian Sea and those, oh, here we go, through the Southern Federation border of Russia. Allow me to ask you a question. How many of you have heard of the Bolshevik Revolution? Well, Bishop, what was the Bolshevik Revolution? It was the Kazarian Mafia, the Rothschilds, who absolutely hate Christ, and they absolutely hate it, okay? Tsar Nicholas II, and the entire Romanov bloodline. Allow me to wipe some of the anointing off. Listen, the question you have to ask yourself tonight, and I have to ask myself, well, Bishop, wait a minute now, why did Lenin Trotsky, whose real name is Bronstein, and Joseph Stalin hate the Romanovs? 
it was the Romanovs who were Christ-centered. The Romanovs' foundation was the Christ. The Romanovs believe in the purity of sanctification and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And the Romanovs, did you know that our first lady, Melania Trump, she is of the bloodline of the Romanovs. Melania Trump, the greatest first lady in history, not Michael, but I'm sorry, not Michelle, another topic for another day. The Bolsheviks were devils. So Lenin was a Khazar. Joseph Stalin, a Georgian Khazar, uh, a Khazarian. And Leon Trotsky, whose real name is Leon Bronstein. They concocted a assassination plot to topple not just the Tsar in the Romanovs, their design was to topple Christ, which would never happen. It will not happen because Christ is still on the throne. Now, the question you have to ask yourselves, where did, I'm still laying foundation concerning the generations of Cain ruling the world. Where did the Bolsheviks get their money to overthrow a Christ-centered dynasty, the Romanovs? Well, it was uh, Lenin who sent, uh, along with the backing of Joseph Stalin, sent Leon Trotsky, there you go, Pastor Jason, or Leon Bronstein to Wall Street. So Trotsky took a ship and it took him months to get to the United States. A man by the name of Jacob Schiff, who is the forefather of one of the most corrupted politicians in the annals of American history, Adam Shifty Shift. Jacob Shift of Kuhn Loeb and Company earmarked a $20 million check of Mississippi in order to overthrow the Romanovs. My question is, what interest would these Kazarian devils, I'm not talking about Jewish people, I'm talking about one fame of the Rothschilds. What interest would the Rothschilds have in overthrowing Tsar Nicholas II and the entire Romanov bloodline? During the Civil War here in the Americas, that began on the 12th of April in 1861, and then on the 9th of April of 1865. It was during this civil war, it was a plot between North and South, South and North. And the plot was subsidized by the Rothschilds where they were subsidizing both sides of this war. Nothing has changed. So Abraham Lincoln was assassinated because Lincoln kept the Rothschilds out of the American money supply, Pastor Sam, by using the family of the czars in Russia called the Romanovs. The Romanovs helped the Lincoln administration to overthrow the Rothschilds who were in both North and South armies. 
as a side note, do you guys remember uh, not too long ago, listen, uh, I was on uh, the show of my brother, okay, uh, down well from Texas, okay, who was, that? well, the deep state is trying to destroy my brother, okay? So the deep state uh, is trying to destroy my brother uh, in Austin, Texas, okay? Because he was exposed, and I got to be careful, okay, uh, about the shootings all over the country, okay? Uh, including the shootings. Uh, what is the name of that school pastor, um, Pastor Colleen, on the East Coast, okay? What's the, Alex, thank you, Alex Jones, thank you so much. You guys are the best students. Uh, Alex Jones, I got to use wisdom. I'm getting text messages from my staff uh, back in New York. Be careful, Bishop. So I was on, uh, Sandy, thank you so much, Pastor Marie. Okay, so Alex Jones, a patriot, a great patriot, uh, was targeted, okay? Why did the deep state react to him concerning, concerning Sandy Hook, okay? Because Alex Jones hit a nerve, okay? Now, that's all I'm going to say concerning Alex Jones, okay? Uh, because I do not want to get a strike, okay, nor be taken down. Do you guys remember that I did uh, a series on Kanye West, okay? Do you guys remember that series, okay? That series I did on the Alex Jones show, okay? Uh, oh, maybe about two, two and a half years ago. So Kanye West had said that Harriet Tubman, Lord God, let, let me let, listen, Lord, thank you. Harriet Tubman, I said this on the Alex Jones show. Harriet Tubman was a 33rd degree Prince Hall Mason. You see, black folk, we've been lied to. You and I were told that this female Moses, Harriet Tubman, had freed over 380 slaves. That was a lie. The actual number that made it out of the South was only 95 because the other 200 some slaves Harriet Tubman had shot. I said it. Harriet Tubman was a two of the Rothschilds, born both in the North and in the South. Harriet Tubman, this is what the system does. They choose your heroes for you. They don't choose Malcolm X. So they will choose Reverend Al Vitamin B deficient Sharpton. They won't choose Malcolm X. They will choose, okay, uh, Ralph Abernathy and Jesse Jackson. She was a double agent. So on Alex Jones' show, and I was on there oh, man, so many times. I was the guest host, okay, um, so that I said that Kanye West spoke the truth. And I broke it down even further that Harriet Tubman was a double agent spy, not representing God in delivering her people out of slavery. Her spy code name was Esophagus. The spy code name for Harriet Tubman was Esophagus not just representing the part of the throat, but the term sophagus means a coffin. She had killed most of the slaves, shot them because they were going to expose her for being a fraud. 
So Herod Tubman was a fraud. Getting back to the Kazarians now. So the Byzantine and the Empire. Now, it takes us from the Byzantine and the Empire to the Bolsheviks. The Bolshevik uh, conspiracy in 1917. Wait a minute now. That was the same year, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Benjamin and Pastor Sam, that the Balfour Declaration took place. The same time in October of 1917, concerning the Bolshevik Revolution, which was supplied by Wall Street, Kuhn Loban Company, which was also supplied by the Rothschilds to overthrow Tsar Nicholas II, which was also, these communist devils was also subsidized, Wall Street, John D. Rockefeller, Kuhn Loeb and Company, uh, including Julius Rosenwald. So they overthrew the Tsar during the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. That was the same year of the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration was named after a British politician by the name of Sir Arthur Balfour, who was a puppet of Walter Rothschild out of London. Arthur Balfour, Sir Arthur Balfour, uh, had created a fabricated house called the House of Saul. The House of Saul are not true Arabians. The House of Saul are not true, what you call Muslims. The House of Saul, thank you, Pastor Sam, are counterfeits. They are domain Kazarians or called crypto Kazarians out of central Turkey. Please look up that term, crypto Kazarians, okay? What is a, a crypto Kazarian? A crypto Kazarian is a man, woman, or child, publicly, they say they are Muslims, or Shintus, or Confucianists, or atheists, but privately, they are Kazarians. The House of Saul, ladies and gentlemen, are not true Arabians. They're not true Muslims. They are crypto Kazarians, who then designed the currency called cryptocurrency, money magic, money manipulation, controlling stock markets through money magic or money manipulation, creating currency out of thin air. Any individual who fights against the crypto system, the government took them out. Remember the owner, the creator of Cash App? That was a CIA hit. So, Balfour, the Balfour Declaration, you remember that teaching, Pastor April, where two entities were created. Number one, the House of Saul was created by the Western powers, by Great Britain, by the United States, okay? By Spain and Italy. So they brought a fabricated house called the House of Saul and added the name Saul or Saudi to Arabia, which now is called the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 
Now, the term Saudi is nowhere to be found in Scripture. Can the apostle teach? There is no Scripture in the Holy Writ, in God's Word, that says the term Saud or Saudi. It's a fabrication. They're not Muslims. They're not Arabians. They're not even Middle Eastern. They are Khazarians. So the kingdom of Saud was put into power by the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, okay, of Standard Oil to take over the oil supply of the government of Arabia. The term Arabia is in the word, but not Saudi Arabia. So the foundation was laid during the 1917 Balfour Declaration that now we have a, a fabricated fake kingdom called Saudi Arabia, where Mohammed bin Salman is not Muslim. He's not even Arabian. He's a crypto Kinsarian. There you go, Pastor uh, Gary Walker. You remember the movie Lawrence of Arabia? What is the name of the British actor who played the lead part, uh, whose hair was blonde? I cannot, his name evades me right now. But the premise of the movie, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, talks about crypto Kinsarians taking over the Arabian uh, oil supply. Peter O'Toole, thank you, Pastor Coney, great actor. I don't think he's, a, I think he passed away some years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Peter O'Toole. So, uh, now, there was a man by the name of St. John Philby, capital P-H-I-L-B-Y. Who was St. John Philby? He was a British MI6 agent who then converted to Islam in order for him to assimilate into Arabian politics in order to be attached to Arabian oil, okay? Uh, his son, Kim Philby, was a part of the Cambridge Five. Those five MI6 uh, agents were double agents working for both British MI6 and the Soviet KGB. So the foundation of the House of Saul was actually laid legally in 1917, which would be which would be the foundation of the state of Israel, Lord Jesus. Let, let, let me take my time here. Listen. The Holy Spirit said, Bishop, take your time. Allow the man of God to get a drink of water. Listen. Philby, there you go, Pastor Sippy. Kim Philby's son, I'm sorry, um, St. John Philby's son, Kim Philby was a spy for, for both MI6 and the KGB, okay? Thank you, uh, Apostle Ty. So now comes on top of this foundation, this fabricated house called the House of Saul would come the future state of Israel. The future state of Israel. Always remember, students, there is a great distinction between the nation of Israel versus the state of Israel. Can I teach? There is a great distinction between the nation of Israel versus the state. Let's start with the latter. Bishop 
does not support Zionism. Let me say this again. Bishop Gators does not support Zionism. Zionism is a political front of the Rothschilds that would design a fabricated house, not the people. The people are not a fabrication, but the political system is. Through the Knesset, the state of Israel is not ordained by God. So when people ask me, Apostle, do you support the state of Israel? I say, no. And they get petrified. Well, Bishop, Apostle, why don't you support the state of Israel? A man by the name of Theodore Hertz, whose family later would change their name from Hertz, okay, to Hertz, okay? Like a Hertz, like in the ambulance or the rental car. Another topic for another day. Theodore Hertz was a Rothschild agent who created the Jewish Congress of Europe in America. Has nothing to do with the Jewish people. I'm talking about Rothschilds. So they needed to create a fabricated Muslim house of crypto Kazarians called the House of Saul to become the foundation for a second fabricated house, the state of Israel. So the state of Israel is nothing more than a fabricated house that is the paradigm as a fugitive. A fugitive in the vagabond, listen, came. So the term fugitive means on the run. We are going to take away the land from black Jews. We're going to take away land from the Palestinians after World War II, drive them out in order to give it to a people who are not true Hebrews, who are not true Jews. I'm not an anti-Semite. I'm just talking about one family, the Rothschilds. So after World War II, okay, now World War I, okay, near the end of it, the House of Saul is established through the 1917 Balfour Declaration, okay? So we go from 1917 to 1948, three years after the end of World War II, where's the cream? <laughs> Come on, Pastor James. So from 1917, uh, 27, 37, 47, 31 years later was the creation of, of a second fabricated house called Zionism. Christ has nothing to do with Zionism, okay? Zionism is a raw child political fraud system, not the people, but the structure. So that's why I don't support the state of Israel. But I do support the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel are those, Pastor Sam, who came on those slave ships. The nation of Israel you see, Zionism is of the synagogue of Satan. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Woo! Zionism is of the synagogue of Satan. You too. Don't take us down. Don't give us a strike. We're not talking about Jewish people. We are talking about a political system designed by the Rothschilds. 31 years later, after the 1917 Balfour Declaration came the state of Israel. I do support the nation of Israel. There you go. The protocols, Pastor Joshua, of the learned elders of Zion. Okay? Now, that's another topic for another day. I support the nation of Israel. 
the transatlantic slave trade was not designed, was not built, and was not controlled by white people. Let me say this again. The transatlantic slave trade was not designed by white people, was not controlled by white people, and was not sustained by white people that we called of the Caucasian world, okay? You see, Satan is the author of confusion, Pastor Sippy. So it was not the Anglo-Saxon diaspora. You see, Hollywood is lying, okay? White folk did not control this. Who controlled the East India Company and the West India Company? The East India Company, owned by the Rothschilds, controlled slavery in the Eastern Hemisphere. And the West Indian Company, controlled by the Rothschilds, that would control slavery in the Western Hemisphere. So the East India Corporation, slavery in the East, the West India Company, slavery in the West, was controlled by one family, the Rothschilds. 2,000 years ago, okay, um, the Rothschilds were called the Baccarats, according to uh, Barak de Spinoza, a powerful Jewish historian, uh, through volume one of the Antiquity of the Jews, they must be stopped, Pastor Sam, the Antiquity of the Jews, it was um, Dr. Barak de Spinoza who had said that the, the Baccarat family had controlled, okay, the Knesset of that day called the Sanhedrin Council, okay? San, like pan, two-horned demonic system. Hedron or Hedron, which is a Latin term meaning hell. I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking one family, the Rothschilds. So the Baccarats controlled the Sanhedrin, and controlled both sides of the political aisle. The Phariseistic system and the Sadduceistic system, which is today Democrats and Republicans, two heads of the same snake called the Rothschilds. And the Baccarats became the Bowers in 1501, and then 76 years later in 1577, the uh, Bowers became the Rothschilds, whose bloodline did not begin in Germany. It began in central Turkey, okay? Even going back 2,000 years to the time of the Christ. And so now you have a fabricated system called Zionism. And so now Zionism uh, almost destroyed Kyrie Irving. Oh, Lord, let, let me wipe some of the anointing off. Listen, do you guys remember, uh, was it last year, some months ago, the bishop did a, a series on Kanye West, Kyrie Irving. Now, the system, listen to me, the system is protecting, let me say this again, the system, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is protecting the slave Jaw Morant. And why? Because Jaw Morant is a fake gangster. Gun, gold teeth, braids, pants hanging, sagging down. The term sagging S-A-G-G-I-N, 
write it backwards, then you get the demonic paradigm of N I G A S. Add the letter G of sagging at the end and write that backwards from right to left. You get the term G, then N I G A S. Sorry, 50 cent, okay, G unit. It is a demonic psyop. I didn't know this until yesterday, Pastor Gary Walker and Pastor Sam. There is a female rapper called Glorella. <laughs> Wait a minute now, not Gorella, Glorella. You see what I'm saying, Pastor James? You see, the system of Zionism and the system of the Rothschilds will not allow black people to be themselves. So you're called 50 cent, quarter, nickel, penny, ice tea, ice cube, ice tray, icicle, ice pop, six, nine, seven, one, Lil Kim, Lil Bow Wow, Glorella. In other words, black folk look at themselves as gorillas and chimps and monkeys and apes and giraffes and cats and dogs. Why? Because you don't know who you are. <laughs> Listen. So uh, the system here of the Rothschilds makes a woman to become Glorella makes a man to become a 50 cent piece, okay? Makes a man to become a Ricky Ross, okay? These men and women are nothing but slaves. So guess who designed garbage? Oh, Lord have mercy. Pastor April, is that a, a female singer? Garbage. You see? This is what they want you to, you see, I'm agitating demons. You see, when I go to these red carpets, people get upset. They don't know why they're upset with me. Pastor Sam, I'm not doing anything to them. It's the anointing on my life that's agitating their demons, and they can't stop me from going. So in the text now, after one hour, 37 minutes and 40 seconds of module one, volume one of the generations of Cain, the ruler of the world. As a side point, before we get into the text, the so-called star of David has nothing to do with King David of 1st and 2nd Samuel. A false messiah who called, called himself a messiah in the year of 1100 AD, a man by the name of David Alroy, there you go, Pastor Rick, A-L-R-O-Y, okay? Also goes by David Mogan. This is where you get that alcohol beverage, Mogan David, okay? You see, oh my God, Pastor Colleen, in the book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, uh, Peter, the apostles, exposes the Kazarian Mafia, and you are worshipers of your God, Renfan. That six-pointed double pyramid was not designed by uh, the Church of Christ, was not designed by King David, was not designed by the nation of Israel, but it was designed by David Alroy, who then was a practitioner of occultism, was a practitioner of the worshiping of spirits in a bottle, was a practitioner of the worship of demons. The term alcohol, alcohol 
it means a demon that has become liquid. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeshua. That's alcohol. And so uh, the uh, present day state of Israel flag was created by a false messiah who was not Hebrew, who was not Jewish. He was not even a Kazarian, Pastor James. He was an Iraqi born in Baghdad, Iraq. The creator of the flag of Israel was a Iraqi by the name of David Alroy. As a side point, ladies and gentlemen, the first pope in the history of the Roman Catholic system was not St. Peter. Listen, we, Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, New York, Los Angeles, uh, we have a former priest who is now one of our student pastors, okay, in New York, okay? He was brought to the knowledge of the truth. The first pope was not St. Peter, okay? The system had crucified St. Peter upside down, okay? It was the emperor Nero who was a cousin of a man by the name of Simon Magus. You'll find Simon Magus both in Acts 8 and Acts 13. No one's teaching this, Pastor Sippy. Simon Magus, or the term Magus means magician. Now, I'm going to say this again. We have to stop calling ourselves MAGA. The term MAGA means magician. I understand what you're trying to say, make America great again, but you have to stop saying MAGA. Like the term America means Americas. Ah, capital A-M-E-R-I-C-U-S. Americas, the plumb line serpent demon of both the Aztec and the Mayan uh, systems of demonology. This is where you get the term America or the plumb line serpent demon. Don't tread on me. Get rid of that flag. Listen, so the term here, state of Israel. Now, getting back to the Vatican, Nero crucified Peter upside down. Can I take my time? Peter said that I am unworthy to die like my Messiah, my Lord, the Christ. See, oh my God, built back, but broken. <laughs> Come on, best Pastor Benjamin and Pastor Colleen. Peter was crucified upside down. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. When you take a cross and turn it upside down, it is shaped like two items. Number one, it is shaped like the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Peter, what, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So when you um, take a cross, Peter's cross, and turn it upside down, it's shaped like a key, the keys of the kingdom of heaven that Christ gave St. Peter in Matthew's chapter 16 and 17. When you take a cross and turn it upside down, St. Peter's cross, it also represents, ladies and gentlemen, not just a key, but the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When you look on a map, not to get away from the text, a theological map of history, every place Christ went for 33 and one half years, every town, city, village, and hamlet. If you would take a pen or a number two pencil 
and connect if a city, town, principality, hamlet, or village where Christ went since the time of his birth, not on December 25th, but during the time of the harvest between September and November to the time of his ascension on the Mount of Olives in Acts 1 and 9, that map is shaped like a heart. Lord, order my steps according to your holy word. If you take a theological map, going back 2,000 years, Apostle McNeil, and connect every country where Christ sent the 11, including Matthias, including Paul, and connect every town, city, and hamlet in every country, that map is shaped like the paradigm of a brain. Order my steps, Lord, according to your holy word. So the first pope was Simon Magus, the magician. He was the first pope. The bones of Peter are not in the basilica. Those are not the bones of Peter. Those are the bones of a warlock in a witch. Always remember, students, a warlock is a male witch. A female witch is a female warlock. So those bones in the Basilica are not St. Peter's. They are Simon Magus, the magician. In the text of Genesis 4 and 1, and at him knew Eve his wife. Stop right there. Can I take my time? I know it's late there on the East Coast. Can I take my time this evening? I said, can I take my time? Now we're in the body of the text after one hour, 47 minutes and 10 seconds. Module one, volume one of the generations of Cain ruling the world. The term sex is nowhere to be found in scripture. Because the term sex, written from right to left, it becomes a, a name of a goddess demon in Persian and Chaldean mythology, Xerxes, X-E-S, or sex, was a goddess of seduction. The term sex is also with coming from uh, the Greek empire from Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. Now, you remember Yale University's skulls and bones. There is a number, thank you, scholar 22, there is a number on the uh, insignia of the Yale University skulls and bones. Allow me to give you a test. What are those three numbers that are on the cover of Yale University skulls and bones? Like Pastor C.P. says, come closer. What are those 322? Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Listen, Pastor Methuselah and Pastor Colin in real time. In Genesis uh, 322, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Always remember, as we're in the body of the text in Genesis 4 and 1, every 322nd verse in the word of the Lord talks about sacrifice in some form or fashion. Sacrifice, blood sacrifice, uh, an emotional sacrifice of emotions. 
spiritual sacrifice, but it also talks about death and resurrection. Every 322nd verse. Why would Yale University's Skull and Bones have the number 322? It represents their god, Demosthenes. Demosthenes, who died in the year 322 BC, was a Greek scholar, a Greek poet in the scholar. Demosthenes built the first underground child pedophilia, child trafficking system in Greek history. Who was responsible? Demosthenes, who died during the year of 322 BC, but that number 322 is a part of the insignia of the skull's in bones. That's Demosthenes. So Demosthenes was what we call a pedophile. Listen, oh Lord have mercy. Demosthenes. So Adam knew Eve, his wife. Now, before the fall of the woman, her name was not Eve. She only became Eve after her fall when Adam named her Eve, okay? Now, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. They became bone. They became flesh because of their fallen state. But what was her name before? They were one. She was called Sister Adam. No, she was not a transvestite. And God called their name Adam. Listen, the bishop would never marry a couple, a man and a woman, if the woman does not want to take her husband's last name. Um, listen, I'm not going to open up myself to this Elizabeth Taylor demon. Another topic for another day. The woman must take on the name of her husband, as we, the body of Christ, take on the name of Yeshua, the Christ. Many of you are still attached, okay, to the world. A lot of you men are still attached to women. You have to detach yourself from these Jezebels. Let me tell you something. These women out here, they are broken, they are damaged, they are fractured, okay? A lot of them are on meds. They're broken, they're fractured, and they're damaged. So, Atom, what is the first and last letters of the term Adam? A-M. Adam represents the A-M of the morning or of that of the day, not the morning, thank you, Holy Spirit, but of the day. His wife that he named Eve represents the PM of the evening. That's wisdom. So it's Adam and Eve and not Adam and Deacon Stevie. It's Eve and Adam and not even Ellen Degenerate, another topic for another day. How many letters, okay? Now you guys listen, you gotta stay concentrated. How many letters does Adam's title have? Four, A-D-A-M. Those four letters represents each thousand years, 4,000 years of the law. So from Genesis to Matthew represents the first 4,000 years of the law, representing the four letters of Adam's name. Eve has three letters, E-V-E, -E, representing 3,000 years of grace. 
That is 7,000 years of a protracted period of time. Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Now, listen. Oh, my God. Listen. How many of you have heard of hetero paternal superfecundation? Y'all remember that term? Hetero paternal superfecundation. That is a medical ph phenomenon where a mother has fraternal twins. This is where you get the term fraternity. You remember that, uh, Pastor Ewing? The twins, listen, the twins belong to her, but they don't belong to her husband. Or in other words, the twins, Pastor Sippy, have two different daddies. Wait a minute now. That God has nothing to do with hetero paternal superfecundation. That is a genetical generational curse. This happens throughout China, South Korea, and this has had nothing to do with the precious Chinese and South Korean people. But that is a demonic anomaly. So Cain's father was not Adam. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. Cain's father was the serpent. Seth's mother was Eve. Okay, listen. Seth's uh, mother was Eve, but also Lilith. Wait a minute, how is that, Bishop? You see, the serpent had a dichotomy. In other words, the masculine side of Lilith is Lucifer. The feminized side of Lucifer is Lilith. So the father of Cain is Lucifer. The mother of Seth is a combination of Eve and Lilith. Do you understand? This is the first transvestite, transgendered blood curse. Now, as a side note, students, the term serpent, it actually is the body organ of Lucifer. The serpent is the body organ of Lucifer. God, I'm going to say something radical. You know what's coming. In our original design, Christ, who is God himself, did not design the man to have that body part between his legs. That came about because of Adam's connection to the serpent. The woman's body part came about because she was but broken by the serpent. She was spirit, but when she got closer to the body organ of Lucifer, her spirituality became pigmented. This skin is not natural. Speak to me, Holy Spirit. This skin is unnatural. What do you mean, Bishop? You see, the term skin or pigmentation represents not your natural state, but your unnatural state. You see, the church must be retaught. You've been taught a lie, and I've been taught a lie, that this flesh is your natural, is not your natural state. It's what we call the unnaturality of a fallen state. Where did Christ send the legion into 
the herd of swine. The swine, ladies and gentlemen, is the characteristics of a pig mentation. So your pigmentation is not going to heaven. Your speak to me, Holy Spirit. Your pigmentation is going to the casket, is going to the grave. Okay. What you are, flesh is going to the grave. Who you are as the spirit in Christ is not going to the grave. It's going back to God who gave it. Every one of you, you are not a human being living a spiritual experience, but rather you are a spiritual apostolic being living this gift called time. You are not human. The term human is nowhere to be found in scripture. Because the term human means monster. It is a legalistical term in the Black's Law Dictionary of 1933, 35, 45, and 48 editions. This is what the Supreme Court uses to define what humanity is. This is what the Congress and the Senate uses. So stop calling yourself human. You're not a sea monster. Stop calling your babies a fetus. The term fetus means an animal. Your child, your babies are not animals. They are spiritual beings. See, people think that this is crazy teaching. Well, this class is not for you. Stop calling your teenage son or daughter youth because the term youth, uh, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, youth means a human cargo. So Adam knew Eve, his wife. So the term heterial, paternal, superfecundation. There are test cases of women having four, five, six children, and each child has a different father. How is that? That is demonic. That is the medical phenomenon called heterial paternal superfecundation. There is another term called ambiguous genitalia. What is ambiguous genitalia? When a child is born, both male and female. That doesn't come from God. That comes directly from the serpent. Ambiguous genitalia. So... Adam knew Eve, his wife. If you go back to Genesis 3, verses 1 to 6, 46 words does the serpent speak to the woman in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. In the King James interpretation, 46 words. But yet, mankind has 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father, 46, 23 in me. Interesting. Okay. The first letter of the word is I. The light of the body is the I. The ninth letter is the, um, the letter I. The last letter of the word of the Lord in Revelation 22, verse 21, is the letter N, the 14th letter of the alphabet. 9 plus 14 equals 23. 23 times 2 
up. 23 serpent times two, Adam and the woman, 46. Oh, Lord, here comes revelation. Only an apostle can teach like this. In Genesis 3, 1 to 6, in the King James interpretation, the serpent spoke 46 words to the woman. Man has 46 chromosomes, mankind. Now, as a side note, there's a great distinction between man and mankind. Man was created spirit. Mankind is a hybrid. This flesh is not natural. It's unnatural. So when Christ cast out the legion, students, this is where you get the term religion, for we are many religion. So that religion legion was cast into pigmentation. During that time, in going back 2,000 years in the Gospels, the merchants of death, okay, the farmers who were witches and warlocks, warlocks and witches, they did not want the apostolic Christ to be there, okay? They don't care if the Baptist preacher is there or, or the Presbyterian. They don't want apostolicity. Let me, allow me to get a drink of water, please. Listen. Why? Because Christ was messing up their money supply. The currency, Yellow Hammer, in that region of Palestine, in the Gospels, the currency had the faces in the bodies of pigs and goats. So the apostolic destroys that region in that currency. So Adam knew Eve's wife. The woman noticed the term bear. Can I take my time tonight? Now, if you guys are getting tired, and I know it's late, I can end it now and we can restart on next week, okay? Now, if not, if you want me to keep teaching, just say, Bishop, keep teaching, okay? <laughs> I hear the Lord keep telling me, Bishop, stop saying that. Listen, the term bear, B-A-R-E, thank you, Pastor Darnell in Detroit, in Genesis 4 and 1, bear came. We interpret it, though we're in the Hebrew Old Testament, but the Persian interpretation of the term bear is the term Mendenhall. Men, den, den, hall, Masonically. When you go to the Urban Dictionary online and type in Mendenhall, it simply means to mount up someone from behind while they are in a fetal position on the ground. After the deed is complete, you roll them over and see the humiliation in their eyes. Why do children grow in the form of a Mendenhall number six. For the past 6,000 years, since the fall of the woman and the fall of the man, children grow in their mother's womb in a Mendenhall number six as a symbol of what the serpent did to the woman, raping her from behind, transferring Luciferic seed into her. And at the same time, this same serpent who approached the woman as a male, approached her husband, Adam, as a female. The serpent is a chameleon. 
So the serpent approached the woman as Lucifer. And the same woman, in the same serpent, approached the woman's husband as Lucifer. You see, demons are chameleon demons, can change colors, cultures, ethnicities, shapes, and sizes. So the serpent wanted to contaminate the bloodline of Christ. So here comes Cain, co-Cain, a co-dependent upon Cain. Through the paradigm of Nova Cain, Nova, the goddess of seduction in Greek and um, uh, Latin mythologies, in Persian mythologies, and um, Cain. So, cocaine is a masculine demon. Nova Cain is a feminine demon. Let me say this again. That's not even in the notes. Cocaine is a masculine demon. Nova Cain is a feminine demon. Same demon, um, different methods of gender that the system calls transgenderism, sexual disorientation that came directly from God. That's why children for nine months grow in their mother's womb in the Mendenhall number of six. At the ninth month, the head in the body of that child turns upside down and becomes the number nine. In Matthew six and nine, the Lord's Prayer. Another topic for another day. She, the woman, was mending hall by the serpent or butt broken. Now, as a side note, during um, the era of slavery in the West, when a slave owner was lacking field Negroes, let, let me, I'm taking my time. <laughs> When the slave master was lacking field Negroes, the slave master, Pastor Sam, would take a mother who would have a son. The slave master would put a potato sack or a burlap sack over the woman's head and tie it at the neck so she would not see the male that she was going to sleep with. She did not know that she was sleeping with her son. So the son's head was covered with a potato sack or a burlap sack, and the mother was sleeping with the son, and the son with the mother, unbeknownst that they were mother and son, and will produce a generation of field Negroes. There is a term in uh, the black community called bag overhead syndrome. Look it up, bag overhead syndrome. If the woman is ugly, just put a bag over her face and sleep with her. See, that mentality came up out of slavery. The National Football League did not start in Canton, Ohio. It started, look at this, uh, Dr. Bay. It started on the slave plantation. When the male slave talked back to the commissioner of the plantation, <laughs> Adam Silver, okay? The commissioner of the plantation would cut off the heads of either the man who was talking back or one of his sons. Dip the head of a child, the son of the man, in brown paint. Tell the mother of the son, take the skull of your husband or child, 
out in a wheat cornfield or a cotton field for 48 hours, 48 hours later, two days later, would take that skull back to the commissioner of the plantation. The commissioner of the plantation would get a pig and gut it from the bottom up, stick the head, the skull of a child, a baby, a man or a woman inside of the pig, sew it up, and would have parties of other plantation children to kick it around. This is called the pig skin. Roger Goodell, the NFL. So you've got 80% of the NFL is black men. Do you understand? This is because of the Rothschilds, the generations of Cain ruling this earth. Pig skin. Multi-million dollar Negro slaves. The National Basketball Association, multi-million dollar Negro slaves. They're slaves. The National Hockey League, slaves. Major League Baseball, slaves. It doesn't matter what color they are. They're still million dollar slaves. Controlled by Kazarian owners and general managers and president, uh, presidents of basketball operations and head coaches. Oh, Lord have mercy. They got to go to parties and meet a woman of the opposite color. I'm not saying, listen, I'm not talking about black and white, okay? But these devils are of the synagogue of Cain. Bear Cain, so Cain was the first Mendenhall child. Genesis 4 and 1. I have gotten a man, not in the Lord, through the Lord, but from the Lord. Wait a minute now. So do you guys remember, Pastor Sam Pastor calling, Pastor Jody Burke, do you guys remember that teaching I did concerning uh, the twin sisters of Cain and Abel. Y'all remember that? Oh, Lord Jesus. I got to go through that again next week. So Cain had married the twin sister of Abel because the twin sister of Abel did not have RH positive and RH negative blood. Adam wanted Cain to marry his own twin sister who had RH positive and RH negative blood. That didn't happen. Cain married the twin sister of Abel who was not RH positive or RH negative in order to continue the serpent's time seed of Lucifer. And the twin sister of Cain after Abel's death, the twin sister of Cain married Seth. The twin sister of Cain married Seth because Seth, who did not have orange positive or in orange negative blood, but the twin sister of Cain, you see, this is called confusion. Women, I got to get a drink. <laughs> listen, listen. You're getting a world-class education. Is your mind blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. Put up those faces if your minds are blown. I double dare you. The generations of Cain ruling the earth. And she again bare his brother Abel. Abel's father was Adam. Cain's father was the serpent. Abel's mother was both Eve and Lilith. 
Cain's mother was Eve. Women, like Pastor Sippy says, come closer. <laughs> Women, before the fall of the woman, later named Eve, post-fall, before her fall, there was no such thing as a period. Before, listen, before the fall of the woman, there was no such entity as a period. Before the fall of the woman, later named Eve, there was no such thing as a premenstrual cycle. Where did the period come from, Pastor Sam? And where did the premenstrual cycle in women? God did not, God did not put that into the woman. The serpent. Prior to the fall of Lucifer, as a, sign, as a side note, take the term Lucifer and write it rabbinically from right to left because Hebrew is written from right to left. It becomes a Latin Vulgate expression, refical, which means the recycling of fecal matter. Before Lucifer's fall, his assignment as a cherubim, the archangel, thank you, Pastor Simone, Lucifer was the minstrel of all the choir choirs, the angelic choirs of the heavens. Ten heavens. When you say it in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The term heaven in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 is a composition of 10 heavens inside of it. It's called the heaven. Now, if it would have said in the beginning, God created heaven, it would be it would have meant it would have meant not 10 heavens, but one entity. But God did not say in the beginning, God created heaven. It said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I want to say something that's radical. This earth here is not the original earth. It's only a simulation. This earth is actually the 10th earth. The previous nine earths goes back to Genesis chapter. You're not ready for that. You see, so in the beginning, God created the heaven, 10 heavens and encapsulated within heaven, 10 earths encapsulated within the earth. This paradigm that we're living in is only a simulation under the illusion of time. God did not create time. I got to blow my nose. I'm, listen, y'all don't like it, but I love you anyway. Listen. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. You guys are so patient with me. You see, the 12-month Gregorian calendar did not come from God. The 12-month Gregorian calendar did not even come from St. Gregory in the mid-1500s in the Vatican. We, you and I have been lied to. The Gregorian calendar, the offspring of the Julian calendar from Julius Caesar, is the 12-month year that was given by fallen angels who then became Gregories 
and gave the 12 month calendar, which are 12 names of demons later in Roman and Greek mythology, Janus, January, Febris, February, the shortest month of the year, your Black History Month, okay? Febris was a transgender god and goddess in Roman antiquity, but they gave that month to black folk. Do you understand? Down to December, see this, we are living a lie. But it's 2023. Actually, if you want to get technical about it, it's 2024. If you count the year 2000 as year as year one, don't count the year 2001 as year one in the 21st century. If you're going to get technical about it, the year 2000 is year one. 2001 is year two. Okay. 2002 is year three. So we're actually in 2024, not 2023. And Temaz was born on the 25th of December. Christmas, paganistic, Easter, Eshtar, Estarte, paganism. Every single holiday is rooted in paganistic demons. If you're going to come into the apostolic, that stuff has got to go. Your skin color, your black history mom, your white history mom, your white citizens council. Oh, I'm sorry, wait a minute now. Okay. Your Puerto Rican, Puerto, all that stuff has got to go. When you're coming into the apostolic, Oh, pray for me, Pastor David and Pastor Sam. Christ was born during the time of the harvest. Between September and November. Well, what does this have to do with the Rothschilds? Because they are perpetuating the lie from their father, the serpent. I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking about one family, the Rothschilds. Their time is up. In my conclusion, Marja 1, Volume 1, of the generations of Cain ruling the world. Henerial paternal superfecundation took place in Genesis 4 and 1. Genesis 4 and 2, and she, the woman Eve, again bare his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of the nature of God's sheep. But Cain was a tiller, a cultivator of the nature of Lucifer, the cursed ground. Look at verse 8. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, let me tell you something. The anointing is all over us tonight. You see, I absolutely love teaching. This is what the church needs. They don't need side shows of the preacher taking a hand. Yeah. Listen, that's, and I'm not condemning people. I used to preach the same way, <laughs> okay? The Holy Spirit said, okay, are you done? Are you done, man of God? <laughs> you see, the black preacher that hoops and hops Handkerchief heads, they came from the plantation. Christ never gave out ministerial license. Ministerial license came up through the Vatican that had transferred to the slave plantation because the slave master chose the preacher. The slave master licensed the preacher. The slave master sent the preacher. And if the house Negro preacher spoke something that the slave master did not like, Pastor Jennifer, the slave master would pull his coattail. That stuff came up out of 
the black church in connection to slavery. Look at verse 8, Genesis 4 and 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Cain, Abel, cannibal, cannibal is in spirit cooking. Oh, oh man, I'm undone. <laughs> That's right, Pastor Watts. Listen, you, see, you're being, you're being delivered to, there are people, Pastor Sam, whose chains are being broken. Do you understand? And there are Bloods in Crips who are students in Los Angeles. Let me say this again. There are Bloods and there are Crips whom I would name nameless, okay? Who are students who are coming out of that Luciferic initiation mess. Genesis 4 and 8. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field. Cain, the blood, rose up against Abel, the crip, his brother, and slew him. The term slew means to violate. Wait a minute now. Cain violated his own brother. Come closer. Cain violated his own brother. But Pastor Sam, where did Cain learn that from? From his father, the serpent. So listen, women, prior to your fall, you did not have periods. You did not have premenstrual cycles. But when the minstrel, the choir director, of the 10 heavens of the angelic choirs in each heaven fell, then the minstrel transferred what is called premenstrual cycles into the woman. That didn't come from God. Well, Bishop, the Lord put that there. Stop. God, listen, there's no such thing as good bacteria and bad. Listen. That came from the serpent, whether it's good bacteria or bad bacteria. Because of God's mercy, the woman flushes that out once a month. On the day that the mother of all living fell, wait a minute now. So when she was butt broken by the menstrual, Lucifer, whose body organ was the serpent, that's why women get monthly periods because the period represents spiritually the beginning of the woman's fall as a period in Genesis chapter 3. And she receives monthly premenstrual cycles to flush out the toxins of what the serpent left 6,000 years ago. Now, people are going to say, I don't believe this class is not for you. Men, there was no such thing as puberty. The term sneenip, which is pinus, the I won't say the word P, but pinus, I'm mispronouncing it on purpose. I'm being vague on purpose. That term was not given to Adam by God. Adam didn't have that, but his fall had produced a prototype of what brought down his wife in him as the serpent. So the Greek Hellenistical deep state medical world gave this title to a man's fallen state part called Pinus, Sneena from right to left. It is, was the name of a female nobleman or politician in Greek 
in Roman mythology and politics. But for some reason, the man's part is named after a female politician. And the part, women, that you were given as a name called clitoris is not the name of a, a female part. It's actually, according to Greek and Roman antiquity, clitoris is the name of a male nobleman and a male politician. Clitoris is called inversion. The man is named with a woman identity. The woman is named with a male identity. You see, this is how Satan operates as the author of confusion. Author, the first six letters of the term authority. Satan is the author of the authority of confusion. Now I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to pick up your jaws from the floor. <laughs> Listen, so in Genesis four and eight, The blood initiated his dead brother through the composition of necromancy. Here we go. Look, look at this, pastors. Necro, this is where you get the term Negro. So the Kazarian system wants you women to be called Glorella. <laughs> The system wants the man to become 50 cent, a quarter, a nickel, a penny, ice tea, ice cube, ice tray, icicle, ice pop, six nine, little pig, big cow. Why? You're slaves. And we're the only group of people on the planet. We don't know who we are. So we allow the system not you and I, but black folk, our people allow the system to redefine you. You will continue to get what you've always gotten, doing the same thing, thinking a different result. So able was the recipient of a butt broken program. Do you know that even today in the Hollywood music system, in order for a man, going back to the time of the Pharaohs, if a man wanted to see Pharaoh, that man had to sleep with a male magician. A woman had to sleep with a female magician. There you go, Pastor Benjamin. Janice, January, and Jane Breen's July. Janice, January, Jane Breen's July. That's the time period under Egyptian law, the Coptic law of Egyptology in the time between Janus and Jambrines or January to July, if a man wanted to see Pharaoh, he had to sleep and be butt broken by a male witch. If a woman needed to see Pharaoh, she had to be butt broken by a female witch. Nothing has changed. If a child, a little boy needed to see Pharaoh, that child slept with another male child, a son of a witch, and vice versa with the little girl. Now, the music, oh, Lord have mercy. Look at this, Pastor Benjamin Clark. In the book of the prophet Daniel, there was all kinds of music. Mu, M-U, animal, animalistic, 
sick. The rappers have got to be butt broken. The Rock Johnson, butt broken. Kevin Hart, butt broken. They're all butt broken. Okay? They're all butt broken. So you're dealing with a generation of rappers who had been but broken. You see, in the 45 missing documents, Sister Joy, and I think I'm going to have to come to the realization I've got to teach a series on the 45 missing lost books. They were not missing. They were taken out by the Vatican that taught the pharaohic system, the pharaoh system of butt breaking. Eminem, all of them are butt broken. These videos of these rappers, Glorella, okay, singing in front of mansions. Those houses are not there. You see, it's all props, okay? Now LeBron James wearing a pink dress. Okay, you want to break Kareem's all-time record, but you got to be butt broken, LeBrick, wearing pink panties. You see, I teach like this. Why? Because I have the testicular fortitude the size of 50 Mount Rushmore's to say what needs to be said. Now look at verse 9. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my brother's nature? Look at verse 12. Genesis 4 and 12. Interesting. Revelation 12 and 4. Genesis 4 and 12. A fugitive and a vagabond. The bloodline of Cain connected to the bloodline of Edom, Esau, has produced these counterfeit Jews called Rothschilds. Look at verse 15, and I'm coming in here. The generations of Cain ruling the world. Genesis 4, 15, and the Lord Yahweh said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Here we go, Pastor Sam. And the Lord God of Israel, Yahweh, Yeshua, Yahashua, set a mark. Wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait. Prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, when the Emperor Constantine and his butt broken girlfriend, Pope Sylvester, had commissioned 365 bishops, meaning each bishop for each day of the year, like Allah being the 365th God, for each God representing each demon of each day of the year in Islam, another topic for another day. The words in the Holy Writ were not separated. They were connected as one code. One day I'm going to teach you there is a 217 letter code of the nature of God. Another topic for another day. Post-325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the Nicene Council, words were separated. When you connect the terms, set a mark. Woo! Listen, set a mark is not set apart. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jennifer. The term set a mark, set a mark together, it becomes a Persian term, though we're in the Hebrew Old Testament. But there is a, both a Persian and a Chaldean interpretation, Sedemark. What does Sedemark mean? 
it becomes the term Caucasian. Wait, 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 wait. Caca. Caucasoid. I'm not teaching black or white supremacy. I'm teaching theological history. Caca. Soid. S-O-I-D. Soid. Soil. Brothers, blood crying from the soil. Soy, cockazoid, Caucasian, cocka, or Asian. Cain was not cursed. So let me say this. You've been taught that Cain was cursed. God set a mark. Thank you, Pastor Sam. A protection over Cain where his pigmentation became bleached. You see, what I'm about ready to say, I'm not teaching black supremacy or white supremacy. The only supremacy the bishop teaches is the total supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ, of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. Scholars, even Jewish medical scholars have said that the black gene, Pastor uh, Deborah, is the dominant gene. All other genes are the recessive gene. The black gene is the dominant gene, which means you can mix any other color with black, it's still black. Any opposite of black gene is a recessive. Not less than, but recessive. You remember that, Pastor Jennifer? So, God, through his mercy, Oh, Lord, have mercy. Christ is speaking. Thank you, Lord. Christ, who has got through his mercy, Pastor Sam, made a dominant gene, Cain, to be under the protection layer of a recessive gene color in order to send him to the cold regions of what is now called Eastern, Central, and Western Europe. So his the size of his nose change, his hair changes, his skin changes. He loses melon, but God has to set a mark or to allow him to be cockazoid. In order to save his life. It's not a curse. It's not a curse. It's really mercy. Oh Lord have mercy. Do you understand how powerful this is? A few days ago. I think no. Actually last week. Thank you Holy Spirit. Um, I talked to. Uh, a sister in the Lord. Beautiful sister who is married, got beautiful children. Um, and I'm not going to say her name, who she works for, but um, she had asked me a question, Pastor Rick, Pastor Sam, and Pastor Ewing. She says, Bishop, I said, yes, ma'am. How is it that Shem, Ham, and Japheth are three different colors? I said, well, that's not the case. Shem... Ham and Jacob. Actually, the oldest son was not Shem. The oldest son was not Jacob. The oldest son was Ham. Another topic for another day. It is a biological impossibility for three sons to become three different colors without any generational curses of melon or lack thereof, which means... Simply put, the prophet Noah was black. 
His wife was black. His wife was a Hittite. Oh, Lord. Albin is, see, that is a part, and I'm going to have to teach that one day, uh, Leon 20. Excellent question. Albinism goes back to the fall of Cain. I'm not saying that any man or woman is cursed who has that, but that's, that, that is genetical properties going back thousands of years to Genesis chapter 4, verse 15, concerning Cain. I think I may go deeper into that on next week. Great question, Nesta Leon 20, 21. Great question. Song of Solomon, I am black and I am comely. So wait a minute now. If Shem was black, Ham was black, and Japheth was black, the father is black. Oh, no, Bishop. My pastor said that Nor was white, Ham was black, Shem was Jewish. Stop, 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 stop. Remember, Hebrew is not a bloodline. Jewish is not a bloodline, but Chaldean is. That's what Abram was. All the prophets were black, Pastor Louise. All the prophets were black. Let me do you one better. All the apostles were black. Oh, my, I'm going to get a drawback on that, Okay. Don't look at the Last Supper as an example, the, the painting of, of the Last Supper. Oh, Lord. Leonardo da Vinci lied. You've been told that da Vinci was a great man of God and he was led of the Lord to paint the apostles through a vision. Stop. The Da Vinci Code through the Last Supper. Let's look at the building of the last. You see, this is a Kanzarian conspiracy. I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking one family, the Rothschilds. 99.9% .9 of the Jewish people are absolutely beautiful people whom the bishop loves. My right-hand person, Sister Lisa, is a Jew, and I love her like a blood sister, Okay. So I'm not talking about the Jewish people. I'm talking about one family, the Rothschilds. The painting of the Last Supper, the building of the Last Supper that has nothing to do with any buildings or temples in Jerusalem. That building is called the Maria del Grazie. The Maria del Grazie in Rome was used as a homosexual brothel. You've been lied to. Yes, Christ existed. He's God himself. Yes, there were true apostles. Yes, there was an upper room. Yes, there was a last supper, but not like the perception of the paintings of Da Vinci and Michelangelo. Megan Kelly said a couple of years ago, Christ was black. The devil is a lie. The painting from the chest up with the long brown hair, with the brown beige background looking like this, that's not the Christ of the gospel. That's Cicere Borgia who died of AIDS before it was named AIDS. Cesare Borgia slept with his own father, Pope Alexander VI. Cesare Borgia slept with his own sister, Lucrucia, which is the female equivalent of Lucifer. Cesare Borgia's face is the shroud of turn. That's not Christ of the you've been lied to. So they, the Vatican, dug up the casket, the briar of Cesare Borgia, put a cloth on his face and told the world this is Christ. <laughs> Do you understand that we have been lied to and we 
are being played. Yes, Christ is still on the throne. Yes, the Trove of Apostles existed. Yes, the Last Supper took place, but not the way that Da Vinci envisioned it. Do you know who, listen, do you know who portrayed Christ in the Last Supper painting? It wasn't Christ. Come closer. <laughs> Pastor Sip, you still there? That was a woman by the name of Julia Farnese. <laughs> Julia with the G. See, Christ did not marry and had children, but the lie put up by Dan Brown in the Da Vinci Code in the Prior of Zion, okay? Through the Knights Templar, oh, Christ had children with Mary Magdalene, the devil is a lie. Oh, I don't mean to preach. Julia Farnese portrayed Christ in the Last Supper. And the individual on her right that's leading the other way that we've been taught was St. John. That wasn't St. John. That's a young woman by the name of Laura Farnese, the daughter of Julia Farnese. Laura Farnese is the illegitimate child of Pope Alexander VI. Through the mistress, Julia Farnese, who was portraying Christ in the Last Supper, her daughter was portraying John, leaning the other way, with the V in the middle, meaning the womb of the woman you've been lied to. And these so-called apostles in the Last Supper, they're not the true apostles. They were rapers and pedophiles and robbers and rapists let out of the Roman industrial prison industrial complex and paid to portray the apostles in the 1400s for Leonardo da Vinci. So it, listen, there's another painting We've been told represents Christ, but it's a man by the name of Salvador Monday, M-U-N-D-I. Type him in on Google Images. Salvador Monday, M-U-N-D-I, is not Christ, is not the Christ of the Gospels. Who is it? Caesar Borgia under another name. Same demon, different name. Same demon, different methodology. So the painting of Salvador Monday on Google Images, holding up a 6-6 six, six sign of his, Lord, forgive me for doing this, but the Lord wants me to give you an example. We're all under the blood of Christ. So this sign here is a 6-6 six, six sign going back to the Knights Templar. And on the other hand of Salvador Monday, is a crystal ball called a crystal orb, which he witches and warlocks. Do you understand high level deception, Pastor Rick? And listen, it doesn't matter what color Christ was, but he was black. You see, people say, well, God is, no, God, Christ is God. And at his ascension, he became spirit. God is a spirit. He's not a color anymore like he was in the body of Christ. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, we have been lied to. The shroud of turn is not the face of the Christ of the Gospels. It's the face of Cesare Borgia. Is that there a Netflix series called The Borgias? One of the most corrupted religious political families in history. Demons. My job is to expose the synagogue of Cain in my conclusion.
the generations of Cain of the Rothschilds. Thank you, Pastor Raymond. Lucrezia, okay, was the daughter of Pope Alexander VI, but Cesare Borgia was sleeping with his own sister. Cesare, wait a minute. Cesare Borgia was sleeping with his own sister, Lucrezia, who was sleeping with her father, who was sleeping with his daughter, Laura Borgia. It's a mess. Okay? Horus, Diocese, and Dionysus, Bacchus. Oh, Lord. That's, listen. And we got to be careful because these names exude curses. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got to go. <laughs> well, is, is this teaching mind blowing? So it's time. Let me let me get a drink of water here. Listen, I got to say this and I'm done. The Medici family, you see, Pastor Raymond. Oh, you're right on it today, Pastor Raymond. Pastor Sam, do you remember the hip hop crime syndicate, the Far East dynasty? They controlled the black pope. What is the black? The black pope is not one person or individual. It's a system of the Medici cartel, going back to the Far East cartel. Hip hop crime syndicate. These Negroes are at the bottom of the barrel. So this crab barrel system created by the descendants of Cain and Esau creates the crab barrel. And they go out and choose a LeBron, okay? They choose a Nipsey Hussle, then he exposes the barrel, then they assassinate him. They choose Chadwick Boseman, but they take him out because he doesn't butt break. And then they chose Kobe, but they took him out because he was not willing to have his daughter to be butt broken. The question we have to ask ourselves, <laughs> oh, that's true. Listen, listen, at the bottom of the barrel to listen, oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me tell y'all something. The devil just came in here. Did you see the name, Timothy Holmseth? The deep, oh, my. You know what, Pastor Sam? <laughs> to, listen, a demon was exposed. Do you understand? I don't know if that is the Timothy Holmes said. Listen, they're all demons. Do you remember little Jesse Jopolter? They're demons, man. They're witches. Okay? Timothy Holmes said is a demon who's wanted by the FBI. I said it. Okay? Why is Jesse connected to witches and warlocks? Why? She's of the bloodline of Cain. In my conclusion, <laughs> a grifter. That's what he is, Pastor Colleen, a grifter. Oh, my. the devil has poisoned the barrel. It's not about black and white. Everyone's in the barrel, not you and I. Listen, there was a book that I read a couple of years ago. Matter of fact, when I was on um, with Brother Rob and Brother Ben on their show. Oh, Lord, what's the name of their show? You can tell it's been a long time. Brother Rob and Brother Ben, great patriots. And matter of fact, that video... When you go on our YouTube uh, official page, the mother of all darkness, that's what Jesse is, okay? Uh, Edge of Wonder, thank you, Pastor Raymond. You can tell the bishops getting tired. Thank you, uh, man of God. Love you, Pastor Raymond. Love Brother Robin, Brother Ben. The first time I was on their show, I would say two, maybe three years ago, and I talked about the greatest global cover-up in human history. I don't use the word human anymore. And Kobe Bryant, it's on the our YouTube site. When you go on our YouTube page, it's the first main video. That show was one of the most powerful shows I was ever on, okay? 
in my conclusion. The black diaspora are the original Jews. Write this down and I'm done here tonight. There's a PDF copy when you type on Google Images. See, I provide receipts. From Cain to Kazaria, the true genealogy of the Jewish people document, D-O-C-U-M-E-N. From Cain to Kazaria, the true genealogy of the Jewish people document, D-O-C-U-M-E-N. It is a PDF copy of a book, a copy of the great impersonation. Okay? Dated March 28, 2012. You'll find that on the website, list.guru.org. Let me get this. You can just type from Cain to Gazeera, the true genealogy of the Jewish people, document. And let me get the website as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Or you can just, just type in from Cain to Gazeera, the true genealogy of the Jewish people, document. Written by Jewish scholars. So don't call my office and you're calling me an anti-Semite. This, this is coming out of their mouth. Remember the book called The 13th Tribe? Written by a Jewish scholar. Here is another book, another document. Type in on Google Images. Cain rules the world. Leopold Zonde, S-Z-O-N-D-I. Leopold Zondi, Genesis 4, In the Nature of Evil, by Adam Jessup, J-E-S-S-E-P. King Rules the World, Leopold Zondi, with the S silent, S-Z-O-N-D-I, Genesis 4, In the Nature of Evil. Leopold Zondi was Jewish, a book re-edited by Adam Jessup. of Flinders University out of Adelaide, South Australia. What is this called, Bishop? It's called receipts. Who created the NAACP? It wasn't black folk. Let me get a truth. <laughs> Listen. The NAACP, thank you, Pastor Colleen. This is receipts, radical receipts. Thank you, Pastor Sam. I got the best pastors in the world. You see? Like, hit, that, hit the like button right now. I dare you. Double dare you. Smash the like button. Share this throughout social media. These are scholars. The creator of the NAACP was a Kazarian attorney by the name of Henry Moskowitz out of Eastern Europe. Alone, ladies and gentlemen, with the Spingarn brothers, The Spingarn Brothers, Joe and Arthur Spingarn, S-P-I-N-G-A-R-N. 
We're told that they grew up in New York City, but they were not born in New York City. They came out of Romania, including Henry Moskowitz. Henry Moskowitz, in the early 1900s, family uh, immigrated to New York City. And the Spingarn brothers, Arthur and Joel Spingarn, immigrated to the United States in the early 1900s, created the NAACP and control it to this day. Oh no, Bishop, we're, we're, we're told that black people, the stop, and we're told that Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, who was a sellout and lied on Dr. Marcus Mosiah Garvey, saying that Dr. Garvey was embezzling money, that was a lie. Okay? W, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois was a house Negro. I said it. Was a house Negro of Henry Moskowitz and the Spingarn brothers. You've been told a lie that Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, okay, Oswald Garrison, um, Villard, William English Wallen created the NAACP. No, Henry Moskowitz and the Spingarn brothers, Arthur and Joel, with Rothschild money, came to the United States in the early 1900s to establish black organizations. Do you understand? Black folk, you're not free. Okay, they went after Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving did not have a gun like Jaw Morant. Pants not sagging like Jaw Morant. Not a blood, not a crypt, but Adam Silver, the slave master, wanted to destroy Kyrie. Why? Because he said that black people are the original Jews. Oh, we can't have that. But little John Morant, we're told that he might have a 50-game suspension. No, he should have been banned from the league. But because John Morant is not a threat to the ADL, is not a threat to B'nai Barith, and don't get me wrong, they do great work in fighting anti-Semitism. I have no problem with the ADL or B'nai Barrett. John Morant, uh, was he suspended for a year? Good. You know what the problem is? <laughs> oh, you know what the problem with young black men, not all, but a high percentage, is that they come from homes where there is either no father or if the father is there in the home, he's emotionally absent. That's proximal abandonment. Where the father wants to be your friend. John Moran's father wants to be John's buddy. No, be his father, not his friend. So Nike, have they canceled Jaw Morant? No, because he's making them money. Why? Because Jaw is not a threat. Where are the 200 names, Pastor Sam, of the creative community of peace here in Los Angeles when they wrote that 200 name petition to Barnes & Noble and to Amazon to take down Brother Dalton's books? So you go after Brother Dalton, but you don't go after little Jaw Morant. Pastor Sam, he should have been banned from the NBA. And then his people say, oh, that was a toy gun. This is sickening, Joanne. This is sickening. Stop blaming white people for your prop. Listen. White folk do not bow down to Black Lives Matter. Why am I talking about this? The only person that, listen, white folk, that you should be bowing down to is 
Yeshua the Christ and not black people. Where's black lives matter when it comes to black on black crime? Where's black lives matter when it comes to bloods killing crips and ki crips killing bloods? Where's black lives matter when it comes to Planned Parenthood slaughtering black children so you don't see these three witches? Alicia Garza, Opa Tometi, and Patrice Collins, where are they? You see, you've been lied to. Ooh, God, God, God. That's it, Pastor Sam. God. I had a bishop tell me years ago, it's wrong, God. God is in control. Lock them up. Pastor Sam, what's going on with these black children killing, beating up white kids? It's demonic and vice versa. And that is my end tonight after three hours, 15 minutes, in 35 seconds of the generations of Cain ruling the world, and I thank you. <laughs> Listen, demons. Well, Bishop, you, you got to use wisdom. Stop. Someone has to speak the truth. Why? I have no fear, Pastor Sam. I'm like Malcolm X. I'm a man that died 60 years ago. A coffin doesn't scare me. The grave doesn't scare me, okay? Because when you have Christ and him crucified, you can stand strong with your back straight, okay? And speak truth to power. Oh, Lord. Ooh, I don't want to start crying for joy, okay? You got to speak. Someone has to stand, Pastor Deborah. Someone has to stand, okay? Target is going to hell. Walmart going to hell. Kmart going to hell. Selling rainbow sashes. Driving gravy trains with biscuit wheels. There's a law. And pastor, listen, uh, our pastors who are out here in L.A., Pastor Dave and Pastor Craig, there is a law. I heard Bill O'Reilly said the other day on Facebook, Pastor Sam, that Gavin Newsom <laughs> is trying to pass state law that would give free stuff, free health care to illegal aliens. But guess who will flip the bill for that? The citizens of the state of California. And if they can't get your money, they will take your property. That goes back to Joseph Stalin. Okay? Rainbow diapers and rainbow dog hats. And listen, this is foolishness. Pelosi's neck. You see, Pastor Rebecca? But you, Bishop, you can't, cannot stop. They're demons. Call it out. Taxation without representation. There you go, yellow hammer. Filthy, rotten demons, Pastor Rick. Okay? Guess who created and ran core? The Congress for Racial Equality. Okay? A Kazarian out of Eastern Europe by the name of Marvin Rich. They control SNCC core Urban League. Every black organization. Black folk don't own anything. Straight out of the United Nations, Pastor Dave. They're going to start taking people's property in order to fund illegal aliens. Oh, I got to go. Listen, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys for being with the bishop tonight. Listen. This is the generation of Cain who are ruling the world, but no more. 
Why was Noah so upset with Ham? Let me test you guys. Let me give you a test. You guys remember that teaching last year. Great to see you on uh, Deplorable Church. Great to see you, woman of God. Why was Noah so upset with Ham? Because Ham slept with his own mother, which then conceived Canaan. There was only eight people on that ark in the beginning. But nine, that, oh, see, Pastor saying nine people were on the ark when it docked, when the waters receded. And the dove with the olive branch represented the Holy Spirit with the word, came back into the window at the top, top of the ark. The window at the top of the ark was approximately 17.5 inches or one cubit. 17.5 inches, but in Genesis 17 and 5, God calls Abram to become Abraham in Matthew 17 and 5. The Mount of Transfiguration, 17 plus 5 equals 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Don't mess with me. So one cubit, which was the size of the window at the top of Noah's Ark, was 17.5 inches. Christ gave one of the greatest revelations in history. When a man can change a cubit of his stature, but the window at the top of the ark, ladies and gentlemen, listen, the window at the top of the ark was 17.5 inches, okay? Can a man... Add one cubit to his stature in Matthew 6, 27. Wait a minute now. Why would Christ say concerning you cannot serve God and man? I mean, you can, listen, if you want to change a man's life, you have to change the cubit of his thinking because your thinking, your mindset represents the window at the top of this arc. So when this changes, the body of your art changes, your finances improves, your health improves, okay? Your career improves. If you want to change a man's or a woman's life, you have to change the way that they're thinking. Let me read that scripture real quick before we're, we, uh, we are out here tonight, before we leave here tonight. In Matthew 6, 27. In the gospel according to St. Matthew, as we end this lecture tonight, the generations of Cain ruling the world. In the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 27, Christ says, which of you by taking thought, by taking thought, can add one cubit, which was, which was the size of, of the window at the top of Noah's ark can change one cubit, cubit unto his stature. Do you know how powerful that is? Can a man, listen, in other words, what Christ was teaching, the power of apostolic self-actualization, when you change this, your entire life changes. Notice what Christ says, which of you, by taking thought, and Luke, it says, which of you, with taking thought. So we go from by taking thought to with taking thought can add the size of the window at the top of Noah's Ark, 17.5 inches unto his or her stature. When this changes, your life changes. Thank you for being with the bishop tonight. Was your minds blown tonight? I said, was your minds blown? In order to have the thought of Christ, you have to take it.
take it. In order to have it in Luke, you got to take it in Matthew 6, 27. All of the moderators, please put up the PayPal link. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Every moderator, please put up the PayPal link right now. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR our media group. There it goes right under Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group with black letters with a yellow or gold background. Take this. I don't like to call this mice or rat on mouse. Take this or your finger. Follow my finger whether you have a desktop, laptop, Apple tablet, Chrome tablet, tablet, Apple uh, watch, Android or iPhone, click on paypal.me. All of the moderators, please put it up right now. Paypal.me forward slash GSR Media Group, right beside Pastor Sam's name. When you take this or your finger and just click on the PayPal link, you don't need a PayPal account. Okay. Don't leave us live, listeners. Got a, I got a very important announcement for you guys. Click on right beside Pastor Sam's name, right beside Pastor Colleen's name. Click on the link. You don't need a PayPal account. Just click on the link. After you click on the PayPal link, ladies and gentlemen, after you click on the PayPal link, then click send. Don't click request. After you click on the PayPal link, click send. And first, plant the Lord's tithe. We don't use this term so. Here at Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, New York, Los Angeles, because the term so is the name of a female hog or pig. This is what the Vatican tried to do to the word, okay? But they failed, thank God. They took out words like plant and put in so. So plant the Lord's type. If your gross is 3,000 each week or every two weeks, Okay, then the Lord's tithe is 300, okay? If your gross is 2,000, the Lord's tithe is 200. If your gross is 1,000 every, every week or 1,000 every two weeks, the Lord's tithe is $100. Okay, dollars. Plant the Lord's tithe. Don't give a, a tithe after what Uncle Sam takes out. Because the earth is the Lord's, it's not Uncle Sam's. But you tie the gross of your income. Because in the book of the prophet Malachi, Malachi, shall a man or woman rob God? How has the world robbed God through tithes and offerings? Or oh, it's just an Old Testament. Stop. It's an apostolic precept. Okay? Also, you can go to Cash App. Um, right under uh, Pastor Colleen's name. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Dollar sign and Glo Global Revolution One. Dollar sign, then Global Revolution One. Plant the Lord's tithe of the gross of your check before the government takes it out. Then number two, plant a lease of $50 or more, okay, as an apostolic free will offering, $50. You should be like popcorn, $50, $60, $80, $100, $200, $500. Three of you give a thousand. The rest of you plant the Lord's tithe and also plant, okay, your very best financial gift, okay? All oh, these witches and warlocks coming in. Listen, you see, the devil's man, I'm agitating demons, Pastor Sam and Pastor Colleen, okay? So go to paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. When you give unto the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. God says he'll give you double for your trouble, triple for your pain. Right now, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. And also, ladies and gentlemen, Plant not only the Lord's tithe, the gross of your income in check, but also plant 
fifty dollars a month, a hundred, two hundred. I think God passed a call me. Okay, uh, they can hit your right straight to the pit. Listen, I have to blow my nose. I am so sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> Pastor Sam, I always ask the Lord, why is this happening? I have to blow, in, you know, during and after every class. Because the Lord says he's purifying me as well, okay? PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, Okay. Pay attention, everyone. It's cleansing. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Also, send your checks and money orders, okay? Send your checks and money. Look, look at that. Oh, someone in coming in as Lucifer. Lucifer, I decapitate you in Yeshua's holy name. Did you see that, Pastor Coley and Pastor Sam? Someone coming in as Lucifer. No, I'm coming after you, Lucifer. I'm coming for you. Off with your head, Lucifer. In Yeshua's holy name, I'm like King David. No fear. I'm coming after you, demons. I'm coming after you, Lucifer. You see? That's why you got to have the apostolic testicular fortitude, okay? All these demons coming out. Listen, Lucifer, you punk demon. <laughs> Listen. It's time to put an atom bomb into hell to blow it up with the truth. Also, send your checks and money orders to Bishop Larry Gators. No fear, no fear to Bishop Larry Gators. P.O. Box 161. Pastor Colleen, if you can put that in for me as well, and I will type it in as well. Bishop Larry Gators. P.O. Box 161, Lomita, California, 90717, right beside Pastor Colleen's name and also right under uh, Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group with uh, black letters with a yellow or gold background. Send your checks in your money orders right now, okay? Uh, also... When you're sending your money orders, always use a post office money order. Don't go to Toys R Us or Walmart and don't go to Target, okay? I'll mail it back. My staff will mail it back, okay? Only get your uh, money orders from your local post office to plant both the Lord's tithe and your very, very, very best apostolic free will offering okay the rest of you go to paypal.me okay funny how they were listening in on the bishop as soon as jc's name jopota's name was mentioned mentioned see they came up okay there are witches including jesse okay she's teaching on the moon flower flower moon that's all witchcraft okay I keep telling these women, stop giving your money to this woman. Pastor Sam, do you remember, was it last year or year before last? Uh, I exposed her book, okay? His kingdom comes in power of the battle. Her original front copy of the book, okay? It wasn't a little girl running through a corn or wheat field. She changed the cover to that because the patriots were exposing her on Twitter, okay? <laughs> you did more than that, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. But my staff and you, we, you guys got to listen to that, okay? Dissected the cover of her first book, the original cover of a little girl drawing a pentagram in a circle on a chalkboard. And for years, she was telling the patriots that that was her in the picture. And Cisco Wheeler took the picture, but that picture goes back to 120. <laughs> Thank you, George. Ice boy. That picture goes back to 120 years. So she's 100. You see, you've been lied to, patriots, okay? And so instead of her coming clean, 
okay, I messed up. Forgive me, we would have forgiven her, but she doubled down, tripled down, and lied, okay? And she went on someone's show saying, well, I don't remember that. You see, you were caught, Jesse, okay? Just come clean. First, she said it was her. We got over 500, oh, let, me get off, let me get off of that, over 500 tweets. She's talking to this devil, Lucian Greaves. Why? But uh, we got a witness. Stop, stop, stop. Okay? No one wants a tarot card reading. It's witchcraft, Pastor Sam. What's, what's, what's this woman's name? She claims to be a patron. She's on YouTube. I can't remember her name. She calls herself the tarot card reader. She's a witch. Okay? Inky witch, reading witch, energy witch, seances, witchcraft, all of that stuff is witchcraft, man. Janie, <laughs> Janie, your witch, okay? Apostles, true apostles of Christ like myself, we speak truth to power by exposing it. I don't hate Janie, but she's under the illusion of demons and she's under the control of hell. Stay far away from that mess. Thank you, Pastor Jennifer. Inky was a Nephilim. That's why Pastor Sam. Flower moon, moon flowers, new age, mothers of darkness. But yet you got women <laughs> giving her money. Oh, what you, you listen, listen, <laughs> listen. Oh, let me go tonight. I told you that John Wick came out of me tonight. Okay, Lucifer, come on up. I'm coming after you. I'm going to decapitate the heads of these demons in the spiritual realm. Don't take this down, Utah. I'm not talking about murdering people, I'm talking about decapitating the heads of these demons through prayer, okay? Woo, let me tell you something. Thank you, everyone. Woo, Bishop, is there any update on the death of Ray Lewis? Oh, I didn't know that, uh, Pastor Kobe. Ray Lewis, was, it, was that the son that played college football? Was that him, Kobe, four or nine? I didn't know that. I didn't. What happened? I did not know. I, I, listen, I got to find out what happened to Ray Lewis's son. I think he had more than one son. I'm not sure. We are the last apostles of the Christ, Pastor Sam. You are one trillion percent right, sir. Oh, my God. Pastor Kobe, I'm going to have to look into that. I did not know that. Protector, you are a man of God. Thank you, Pastor Deborah. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. Pray for our president, President Donald J. Trump, for our first lady, um, first lady Melania Trump, the best first lady we've ever had. They're not perfect, but I thank God for them. Pray, okay, and that God will expose these demons like little Mike Pence, okay? You know why they're not touching him? Because he knows their mess. He knows their mess. They're all in the same mess. Okay? And listen, patriots. These witches have got to be exposed and kicked out of our movement now. See, God spoke to me through me last year, last summer to you guys. In order for President Trump to get back in through our prayers into the Christ. We cannot have these witches and these tarot card readers, okay? Bill Johnson, Bethel Reddy, he supports young men and women going to graveyards. Remember that, Pastor Dave and Pastor Craig? Laying on the graves of the saints to soak up the anointed. No, that's witchcraft, Bill Johnson. And Bill Johnson supports Bethel Redding, the pastor of Bethel Redding. Bill Johnson supports not only grave sucking and grave soaking, which is witchcraft, Pastor Jennifer, but he supports 
a so-called ministry called Christ Alignment. A couple named the Hodges. Look it up. Christ Alignment. They teach Christian tarot card reading. No, it's witchcraft. Call it. Okay? I'm sick of these churches having these witches and warlocks and grave suckers and grave soakers. Now they're calling gospel music, okay, soaking music. So you, wait a minute, you're trying to bring Christ into witchcraft. Stop. <laughs> you should be like popcorn, like Pastor Queen Sugar says, okay? 80, 100, 200, 500. I thank God for Pastor Chris Harris. From Long Beach, California, one of our powerful, strong student pastors who gives faithfully. Everyone, please, I don't care if it's 200, 500, three of you give a thousand. We got students in the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, okay? Um, I was blessed to be uh, interviewed on a radio station last night, okay? ND100 near Warner Brothers Studios. And um, once that, sh that show was pre-taped, pre-recorded, and the brother told me he will get me a copy of the interview. Once uh, I receive a copy, I will have my, my staff in New York put it up, okay? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. PayPal.me forward slash GSR. Or, or Take this or your finger and just click on Okay, right beside Pastor Sam's name, right beside Pastor Colleen's name, paypal.me forward slash GSR Armenia Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSR Armenia Group. Also, please pray um, for uh, Pastor Kennard uh, uh, and Pastor Holly Haggerty. Okay, pray for Pastor Kennard, Pastor Kennard. You are healed, sir. You are cured. You are made whole in the name that's above every name. At the name of Yeshua, the Christ, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Yeshua, the Christ of the Gospels, is Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We love you, Pastor Holly. Pastor Holly, everything is going to be all right. This, listen. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God, Christ himself, may be glorified thereby. Okay? You shall live and not die, Pastor Kennard Haggerty, and you shall declare the works of the Lord. Thank you, everyone. Healing is the children's bread, Pastor Joyce. That's what Christ said. This is deliverance ministry. Okay? Um, I want to announce, beginning the first week in July... I'm going on vacation. I'm tired. I am really tired. I've had so many meetings this week and so many uh, events I've gone to. And I'm con contracted to go to. So, listen, of the first two weeks in July, should I take off two weeks, Pastor Colling and Pastor Sam and Pastor Queen, or should I take off a week? Two weeks or a week? I, I think I should take off two weeks. Um, the Holy Spirit told me, do not fly out of the country, Bishop, too. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Uh, thank you, Pastor Lavetta Watkins. The Holy Spirit, thank you, Pastor Colleen. The Holy Spirit told me, uh, thank you, Pastor Ellis Ewing, uh, man of God, uh, do not fly out of the country, okay? I do have a vacation home, a little tiny vacation home I go to, but God told me don't leave the country right now for a reason. So, Pastor uh, Colleen, if you can send me some vacation spots out here, uh, let, uh, you know, I pre if you can just send that to me through Facebook Messenger. Uh, the first two weeks I'll be gone, no teaching, but I will do some peek ins. Y'all like those peek ins? I'm going to do some peek ins, okay? Uh, when I'm on vacation, on holiday, I'm tired. I am really, I've got. Two meetings tomorrow, okay, with filmmakers, okay, in Beverly Hills, okay. I gotta stop saying that. I don't want the devil know where I'm at. So, um, my my security will be with me anyway, okay. So pray for me. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Love you, Scholar Twenty Two. Love you guys. No weapon that's formed against the bishop shall prosper. And every lying tongue that is risen up against me, God has already condemned it. For this is. 
the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is a me, saith the Lord. God bless you. And that is it today, module one, volume one of the generations of Cain ruling the world. And I thank you. Big news, uh, listeners. Next Tuesday, Pastor James Evans, the third. Uh, I love that name. Uh, man of God, you're a powerful man of God. Okay, James Evans the third. That's a powerful name, brother. I mean that. The anointing is on your life, Pastor James. Love you, sir, in Christ's holy name. Um, beginning Tuesday, Pastor Sam, uh, I'm going to uh, begin a probably a one-time series on the assassination of Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Oh, Lord, spread the news in Detroit. Spread the news back in New York, out here in L.A., all over the world, that the bishop next Tuesday will be teaching uh, for a one-time series teaching, a lecture entitled The Assassination of Dr. Khalid Muhammad. The assassination, I said it, the assassination of Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Someone within the new nation of Islam, okay, Pastor Simone Williams and Pastor Libetta Watkins, is an FBI informant who had Dr. Khalid poison. We'll see you guys on next Tuesday. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Praise God. And again, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks, Bishop. I love you too. Thank you, Pastor James Evans III. Powerful man of God. I'm telling you, you got a beautiful family. All you guys, I know you do. I'm, I haven't even met your families yet. But I know you guys have beautiful families. God bless you. If you want the bishop to come to a city or state near you, okay, definitely let me know, okay? You can text us at 917-736-5946, 917-736-5946. And I think what I'm going to do, Pastor Sam and Pastor Colleen, when I get back from vacation, we're going to do a mass deliverance session. You guys remember that? Those mass de deliverance sessions? It takes a lot to prepare for that. My staff back in New York, they have to take a day off of their jobs before the mass deliverance the next day. And then they have to take a day off the day following. Okay, Pastor Colin, there's so much that goes into it. I am, I'm drained. OK, so we're going to have that on a Thursday, not a Tuesday where I'm teaching. And then the next then the th following two days, I got to do that. No, that's a, that's a lot. I can do it. So we're going to be fasting. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. So um, when I get back from the holiday, um, the second, no, the third Thursday in July, the third Thursday in July. I want you guys to go on a fast, beginning with myself. What date is the third Thursday in July, Pastor Colleen, or Pastor Sam? Any one of the pastors you guys can find. What is the third, the third Thursday in July, okay? Um, that's going to be the date of our mass deliverance session. We probably need to have, like, have that like once every month or every two months. God bless you. Love you, Pastor Craig. To call you tomorrow, you and Pastor David. I want to see you guys on uh, Sunday, July 17th. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. That will be the date of our mass deliverance section, uh, session. Our mass deliverance session. I've been in deliverance. I've been in ministry for 43 years. Oh, my God. 35 of those years in deliverance. Okay. Correction. It's the 20th. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's the 20th. So July 20th, the third Thursday in July would be our mass deliverance session, okay? Fast that day, whether it's a half a day, a couple of hours, however much. I know a lot of you, um, especially the older pastors may be on medication, so we use wisdom. So, um, you know, continue to, to take your medication. Uh, we have a lot of seniors who are students, so I use wisdom, Okay. Uh, the rest of you who are not on medication, try to fast whatever, however much you can fast, okay? Um, a lot of you are working, so uh, you may not be able to fast because you have to eat when you're on your job. If you're working, uh, eat, okay? But 
maybe fast by not reading a newspaper during your lunch break, okay? Or watching TV or listening to your radio during your lunch break. God bless you. Uh, mass deliverance. Get your buckets, tissues, and towels. Oh, Lord. People have vomited. People, I'm telling you, down through the years, they've had their demons cast out. Pastor Colleen, demons coming out cussing with words I've never heard before. I'm telling you. God bless you. See you guys next Tuesday. I am going to get my Cuban soup. I got some Cuban soup. Uh, one of my um, personal assistants got the bishop earlier today. Uh, one of our church mothers. God bless you. Green vomit. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Woo! Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. You guys remember, I gave forth this apostolic testimonies of a man that I was ministering to, but he didn't want to get up. He was sitting at the back of the church. Remember that, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Sam? This was in Heath, Ohio. And the Holy Spirit said, he had been sleeping with a man. That's why he didn't want to get, I was not judging him. The man was delivered, okay? A couple in Brooklyn, New York, okay? Vomiting green blood. The man's breath smelling like, excuse me, semen. That's what the Holy Spirit said. A woman's breath, excuse what I'm about to say. The woman's breath smelled like a period. That's what the Holy Spirit. Listen, demons cast out in Jesus' mighty name. And yes, you was holy name. God bless you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for the assassination of Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Woo, these demons are agitated tonight, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Sam. Someone calling them loose. No, I'm coming after you. I'm the apostolic John. God bless you. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Mina Group. Click on the PayPal link. After you click on the PayPal link, link, then click send. Don't click request. Click send. Plant the Lord's tithe of the gross of your check, incoming check and plant at least $50, $100, $200. Three of you give a thousand, okay? God bless you. I love every one of you. I'm in love with every one of you. Don't think it's strange when the bishop says he's in love with you. It means I love you as Christ loves you. Good night. I thank God for you guys having my back. Thank you, Pastor Colleen and Pastor Sam. Everyone, thank you for sending me alerts on Facebook Messenger and having the bishops back. Thank you so much. God bless you. They're mad because they're already defeated. Back, back, thank you, Pastor Rainey. Uh, okay, SD, that's true. The devils were really agitated, but they've been decapitated in Christ's holy name. Good night. Get some rest. Promise you won't be late like this next week. I do apologize to the East Coast. God bless you. The bishop loves you so much with all of my heart. Thank you. Keep me in your prayers. Fast on July 20th. For Mass Deliverance Day, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend in Christ. God bless.